Good evening and welcome to the PBUSD board meeting. We have translation in Spanish. If you need that support, please see Urania Lopez. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos a la reunión de la Juente Directa de PBUSD. Disponemos de transición en español. Si necesita ese apoyo, consulte a Yarena Lopez. I also see a lot of new faces here tonight, so I want to make take a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion, sometimes strong differences. Please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking. This will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct its necessary business. I will now move us to item 3.2. I will ask Trustee Dodge Jr. to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. I will now move us to item 3.3, .3, Interim Superintendent Reports. This will be the time for Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman, to make a few comments. Thank you, President Acosta. Welcome, everybody. We are in a wonderful facility in the heart of Watsonville. This is my final meeting as the Interim Superintendent. And first and foremost, I want to thank the board. This has been a wonderful opportunity. I hugged every one of them uh, before the meeting, and I really am grateful for this opportunity. I appreciate your leadership and working with you this year. I also want to thank everybody for your involvement. We've had uh, some tough stuff, but it's all for the right reason. No matter what, democracy is really healthy in the Pajaro Valley Unified School District, and it's been just a delight. My first two months, I had to ask myself, I wonder why would anybody aspire to this job? But I kind of figured a few things out with the help of the board and with the help of our administrators and other people in the community, including some mentors. And it's really been a wonderful challenge to end my career. I might do a few other things in life, but I want to close with this announcement, again, with gratitude. I have an email from the Monterey Peninsula Community Foundation at about 4 o'clock today. Their board allocated $250,000 to the building of a synthetic turf field at Pajaro Middle School. We need, we need two million. We are a half a million short. We've come a long way, partly with help in the district, but we work and live in a beautiful community and I look forward to seeing maybe even construction this summer um, to begin the placement of a field at Pajaro Middle School. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to the board. That's my report. Thank you, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. We will now move to item 3.4, Governing Board Comments uh, and Reports on Standing Committee Meetings. This is the opportunity for each board member to take a minute um, to comment. Each board member has one minute, and we will start with Student Trustee Ruby Maya. Thank you. Thank you, President Acosta. Um, good evening to everyone. I wanted to briefly introduce Empower Watsonville, a youth-led organization made up of youth from all comprehensive high schools in our district here tonight. Empower Fo Watsonville focuses on helping youth voices be heard in the community. Their goal is to advocate for youth striving to prevent substance abuse in their lives. They were established in 2019 and are currently on their third cohort. Over the years, they have inspired and uplifted the youth in the community. On another note, I want to use my time to say that we've all heard the facts supporting the renewal of the CRE contract. I urge you to please listen, bring back the CRE contract, and contribute to our district's potential to deliver the quality of education ethnic studies aim to provide in collaboration with BIPOC for professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Student Trustee Romero Maya. I, I will now move to um, Trustee Milano Scow. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for engaging with this board. Uh, just a quick thing, I want to give a shout out to the County Office of Education. I was honored to speak at their Youth Environmental Summit on Monday. 
Uh, we had a lot of great representation from PVUSD, and I just want to thank everybody, all the students and staff who uh, participated. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Murray Schechtman, for a great year here at PVUSD. Uh, you came in with very little notice, and you stepped up uh, and took on a huge job, and in some ways a, a thankless and, and a winless position as interim, but you handled it with grace, leadership, uh, and I know, and it's not just my opinion, I hear it from our, our community, our teachers, our principals, uh, our staff on, at the schools that uh, the district's on the up and up because of your steady leadership and your wisdom, all of your years in PVUSD. So uh, as the youngest member of the board, uh, and as sometimes when we're young, we think we know everything, but it, it's great to have somebody with leadership and wisdom helping uh, govern this year. So thank you so much, Murray. Appreciate you. <laughs> I will now move on to Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, this last weekend, we um, laid somebody very dear to, re to rest, and that was Willie Yahiro. Willie uh, was a wonderful board member um, for this district, a wonderful teacher and coach, and graduate of Watsonville High School. After board meetings, Willie, I, and Bill Beecher, and sometimes other board members, would go to Taco Bell, sometimes 11 o'clock at night, and we'd sit there to, and rehash a lot of the meeting and talk about um, how to do things better. I didn't always agree um, with Willie, but we had a, a love for each other and a deep respect, and we will miss him. In the fall of this year, I visited him and his assisted living over in Salinas, and we had a wonderful visit, and he was still very, very sharp. And I'll miss him as a friend and a colleague. Um, I have more to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, regarding uh, Interim Superintendent Murray Sheckman, Murray, thank you for answering the call um, and for steering the ship along with our cabinet this year. Um, you were uh, wonderful to work with the first time and even better the second time. I've appreciated your input, your humor, your, um, you're just a lovely human being and I think that's what this district needed was somebody with an open heart and an open hand uh, to steer us uh, through some difficult times. So thank you very, very much. Really appreciate you. And um, finally, um, I think all of us potentially talked to um, our new superintendent, Heather, this week. We had individual meetings with her, and we're, I'm very excited. She's a very sweet person and a really accomplished human being, and I look forward to having her as our superintendent. Thank you. I will now move on to thank you, Trustee DeSerpa, to Trustee Dr. Holm. And I'd like to remind everyone that it is one minute. Thank you for the kind reminder. The Pajo Valley Education Foundation held its spring fundraising event this last week, and I want to thank all the board trustees, PVUSD staff, and community members that attended. Our incoming superintendent was also able to attend, and what a beautiful introduction to how community comes together to support our students. It was a very successful evening. I want to use the remainder of my time to express my appreciation to Mr. Sheckman. Murray, you returned to serve the district during a key point of transition and led with wisdom and kindness. Your steady guidance allowed what could have been an incredibly difficult and tumultuous time to instead be a solid foundation for the district's next chapter. I won't minimize the difficulty of your job or the challenges we still face, but you were instrumental in moving us along in a positive direction, and our students and community are the better for it. For that, you have my deepest appreciation and sincere best wishes for your next chapter. Yep. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll now move to Trustee Dodge, Jr. Uh, good evening, everybody. Just to be quick, um, you know, thank you for the Watsonville City Council for letting us be here this evening. Uh, it's kind of ironic. There's another Dodge and Acosta here this evening, so <laughs> just a little joke and sense of humor that I get from my dad. Uh, you know, also, I just also wanted to mention Willie Hero, uh, coach, teacher, uh, Watsonville legend, uh, local hero and business owner, uh, you know, thank you, Willie. You know, go cats. Once a wildcat, always a wildcat. I like to say. Uh, thank you, Mr. Murray Shackman. We've come full circle. You know, you were my principal in E Hall, and here we are again. 
and uh, I, I learned a lot from you and you know some of the teachers that were my teachers at E Hall Mini White, and I'd like to say thank you very much, you know, for letting me be here and and letting, the people letting me be here. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Watsonville City Council members that I reached out working with. You know, I know traffic is an issue here, and we're on it. And uh, thank you very much, Gina Casadiana. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. I'll now move to Trustee Flores. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I also was able to attend the PVEF Spring Fling, and what an amazing night it was. Um, I loved seeing uh, the students' performances and the community heroes that they um, acknowledged that, that night was just amazing. Um, and so, and I also want to say thank you, Mr. Shackman, Superintendent Shackman, um, for your time with us and helping us during this transition time. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. I will now move to Vice President Soto. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here this evening, and thank you, City of Watsonville, for uh, the accommodations. I want to acknowledge Murray tonight as well, and uh, thank you and appreciate you for the work that you've done for us temporarily. Um, we've had some ups and downs since you've been here, and uh, you know, you've handled them well, and you've taken on the adversity uh, properly. With that being said, I also too had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Contreras this last week as well, and to reiterate uh, Trustee Deserpa's comments, uh, had a great conversation with her. I think um, we unanimous, unanimously made a great decision in bringing her on board. She has some great ideas, and I think that she's really going to innovate the, uh, the district um, in a positive light. So thanks again. Uh, thank you, Vice President Soto. So in the interest of time um, and for my colleagues who went over on time, I will just say thank you everyone for being here this evening. Thank you to the City of Watsonville for allowing us to host our meeting here. And uh, thank you, Mr. Sheckman, for your 10 months of service to PVUSD. Um, now moving to item 3.5, High School Student Board Representatives Report, Aptos High School. Do we have a report from Aptos High School? Good evening, and thank you for having us. Okay. So, as of April 2024, we're here to give you guys some um, updates for Aptos High. Um, we're going to move through our table of contents, which will go over our academics, our athletics, our arts, and our activities. Um, so for our academics, we're going to be covering WASC, the PSAT, SATs, and our finals week. So for WASC accreditation, which was April 14th through 17th, we are very pleased to share that the WASC team was really complimentary to our school. They highlighted our students, our culture, our staff, and our parental support in a variety of our classes and opportunities. They said that our teachers create a very positive and supportive learning environment and the students feel safe taking risks. They also told us to just continue cultivating and enhancing our culture of respect, trust, and inclusivity among both our students and our staff. For our AP testing, there's 370 students taking AP exams, and in total, we're taking 724 AP exams at our school through May 6th through May 17th, and they are in 20 subjects. Our finals weeks for seniors are the 30th and the 31st, and for the other three grades, they're the fifth through the seventh. Okay, and now we'll move on to our arts. So we have our current theater production. Um, it's called The Pajama Game. Um, it's, it's a sold out show, um, three weekends in a row. Um, it's 
very, very inclusive and exciting for our um, community. We're actually participating in a school-wide pajama spirit day um, this Friday to promote the play even further. And then some upcoming events. We have our band concert um, on the 2nd at 6.30, um, and then our vocal jazz concert at um, on the 11th, oops, and then our variety show on the 17th. Um, and moving on to athletics, we have some news for sports, scholarships, and events. Um, right now, our boys championship tennis game was on the 24th at Seascape at 3.30. It was for singles and aptos doubles versus Santa Cruz High School. For lacrosse senior night, that was on the 22nd, and girls lacrosse had a very good win against Santa Cruz. And also, Kathleen Alari won the Joyce Ridgeway Scholarship. Okay, and now moving into our activities. So we hosted our prom on April 20th. Um, we had the Garden Gala prom theme, which we started planning in January. It was really exciting for our juniors to get a, a hold of this um, organization. We really developed our ethical skills um, and our ability to handle payment transactions, as well as cultivate um, a positive culture for our school. And then we had our Spring Spirit Week, which was the last rally of the year. Um, we had every single day was a dress-up day with lunchtime activities. Um, and our, our emphasis this week was to focus on including every single member of our student body. So um, there's a couple images up here. Um, for example, our school-wide rock, paper, scissors contest, which um, really allowed any, single, any student to participate. Um, and yeah. And then finally, we ha hosted our 2024 to 2025 school year elections for the upcoming year. Um, we have our ASB elections, um, and then we also have our class elections, so juniors, senior, or juniors, seniors, and sophomores, and then our freshmen will be having their elections in the upcoming year in August. And thank you guys so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. And we will now move to Renaissance High School. Do we have representatives from Renaissance High School with us? Welcome, thank you. Uh, hello, Board of Trustees. My name is Rihanna Macias. My name is Gia Silva. Okay, here are the students of the month in April. I'm one of them, <laughs> Rihanna Macias and Alvin Martinez. Here are some ac academics. We have 20 new students enrolled in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, we had 151 students enrolled. We had eight seniors graduate during the third quarter, and we have an 84% pass rate for the third quarter. For trade school trips, we toured the UTI Universal Technical Institute in Sacramento. More trade school opportunities. The barber school came to Renaissance High School last week and showed us more about the school. Here are some positive campus vibes. We have the staff team. We have staff and students that do workouts after school and the students are now designing our PBIS signage for campus, which is gonna be fire. Literally. <laughs> for the staff room renovation, this is the before and this is the after. Uh, for our sports, we're currently in the soccer season and we have a three to zero in soccer this season and we're currently in first place. Thank you, Board of Trustees. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next um, high school student board representatives, do we have anyone from Watsonville High School here with us this evening?
Sounds good. Welcome. All right. Good evening, board. Um, my name is Argelia Sanchez Mauricio, and I'm here to represent Watsonville High. Okay. So I'm junior class president, and these are our other officers. Um, so this past Saturday, we had a successful prom. It was pretty fun. We had banda, DJ, cater dinner, taquero, photo booth, a 360 photo booth, and over 435 students attended. And there's some pictures. So prom is a fundraiser. Um, all money that we earn from prom goes to grad night club. We're projecting our sober grad night tickets to be between 20 to $40. Also, this money will be used for senior and graduation events towards the end of the school year. Thank you to Driscoll's and Mr. Luis Guerrero for partnering with us to help fundraise money for prom, grad night, and ASB clubs. Students successfully sold a total of 890 barbecue tickets. Part of the fundraiser went to students to help pay for their prom ticket, and over $24,000 was raised to go towards ASB clubs, events, and our sober grad night that's on June 7th. So our Cinco de Mayo food sale is a variety of our school clubs will be selling food of their choice as a fundraiser for their own clubs. A car show takes place too where approved students and, ta and staff can participate in. This traditional event helps promote cultural awareness within our school community. And Senior Spirit Week and graduation. With our upcoming graduation, we're looking forward to activities for seniors, like Senior Spirit Week, that goes on from May 13th through the 17th. There is seniors and staff let the games begin, which is in every day there will be an athletic game like softball, basketball, rallies, et cetera. Um, senior sunset and a rally called Kiss a Senior Goodbye. And then we have graduation on June 7th at 2 p.m. And later that night, we have our sober grad night from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. And as aforementioned, tickets are projected to be between $20 to $40. So with state testing, um, we just had state testing, which I thought went well. And next one, please. And then we have upcoming AP testing, which our students are studying hard for. These are some of our upcoming senior nights for some sports like boys golf, boys volleyball, baseball, and softball. And our Youth Environmental Action Summit. Watsonville High participated in the Regional Youth Summit among the Watsonville High Esner Teachers and Esner Academy and Safe Club, getting us closer to our mission to, be, to become green certified. Thank you, board. Thank you. I will now move us to item 4.1, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, President Klausen, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask if we can make a motion to put agenda item 7.1, public comment first, before report and discussion. So I've been informed that we have outside consultants who are here this evening to, on the report and discussion that we're paying for their services okay. to be here. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yes, and we also have um, students in regards to item 6.3 in-house, young students. So do you still want to make that motion? Or are you willing to amend it? Yeah, uh, I'd like to amend it and make uh, a motion that we support the agenda. To I'm approve the forward. agenda yes. as is? Yes. OK, I have a first. Can I have a second? Second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion carries 7-0. Moving on to item 5.1, approval of the March 13th, 2024 board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a, a first and I have a second. All the, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion carries 7-0. 
For item 5.2, approval of the March 27th, 2024 board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. I have a first and I have a second. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion will carry 7-0. Moving on to our report and discussion items. Item 6.1, a comprehensive infrastructure renewal and sustainability program progress update on the first, second phase and new funding. This report will be presented by our interim superintendent, Mr. Sheckman, and Bernadette Carter from Climatech. And I'm gonna say a few words and ask Tyler Gertman and Bernadette to come on down to the microphone, and Sylvester will put up your slides. One of the delights of this year has been working with a green team, a group of dedicated educators in our district who have one goal, certify every school green and the district office. Climate Tech has been in our lives for a few years, and they have done incredible work improving the, the infrastructure of our school district and they will report out how they're saving us money, how they're helping us improve the planet, and they're just a really progressive, a very effective company, and it's just been a pleasure. So they're gonna give us a brief presentation about the good things that are coming up with their company and the work they're doing in the Pajaro Valley. Thank you, thanks for being here, folks. Perfect, thank you. Good evening, appreciate the time, President Acosta, trustees, staff, interim superintendent, Sheckman and the community, thank you very much for the time to be here and to provide an update of the progress that we've made um, since the selection and the implementation of our programs. Um, we're very proud and fortunate to be a partner with the district and, and now have been on the green team here um, helping drive those efforts um, even further. My name is Tyler Gertman. I'm the regional manager for Climate Tech, and this is Bern Carter, business development manager for our uh, company as well. Before I before I jump in, I want to say I want to say one thing. You know, it's been it's been a, a complete joy working with the district, and I really want to call out a few staff members that have put quite a few hours in, not only into our program but into other programs to really help the district thrive. Um, Richard, Herlindo, and Sergio, um, the countless hours that they put in as staff and the day-to-day -day that we've worked with them has just been amazing. And so, you know, obviously great hires and advancements for them, but they have just poured their heart and soul into this district. And I just wanted to acknowledge them because they've just been great. And we work with a lot of districts, but your team is excellent. So um, kudos to them. Next slide. Just to back up and go through the process of how, um, you know, how we got here today. Um, so back in 2021, the district put out an RFP. They conducted quite a few interviews, um, and we were fortunate enough to be selected as the design build provider. We've, we help fund and address aging infrastructure and renewable projects for districts and public entities and cities, such as the city of Watsonville. Uh, utility, so once we were selected, utility baseline development, engineering site assessments, um, and then obviously brought back the projects for approval um, and proceeded forward with the implementation. We are finalizing the presentation for phase one right now uh, that you approved and we are uh, underway on phase two as well and I'll go through those briefly. So high level, scope of work, really focused on a lot of the heavy main users of your utility expense, which comes out of your operational budget. Um, starting with the district office and the heating and cooling systems there, that is the highest consuming site um, that the district has, which means most of the money is spent on the operational cost of that facility and complete modernization of the heating, cooling, building automation. Um, LED lighting, over 7,000 fixtures were replaced with LED lighting um, throughout 14 sites. Um, and that is the remaining LED lighting that was upgraded for, for the district. So that is now completed across the board. Um, solar PV structures um, at the district office is into the city right now and being proposed for implementation. And then park in at Calabasas. Calabasas was projected to be the first net zero energy site of this district um, and has been you know, in the news and press releases as well. Um, EV charging stations at the district office for your nutrition or electric vehicles, and then backup power generators. Back in 2021, 2022, the district had a lot of blackouts um, at specific sites, Bradley and Calabasas, and so these technologies were to back that up. And one key point here at the bottom, 
At PV High, we actually submitted a grandfathering application into PG&E and was approved over a year ago. And there is a timeline to this to install renewable energy. Otherwise, the district will lose that benefit of the NEM 2.0 uh, financial. So just keep that in mind as we move through this presentation. So just a quick program status. Um, the lighting is 100% complete, um, but for the rest of the measures, um, we, we just have a few things to touch up on the HVAC BAS. The solar phase one is waiting on PG&E and um, the IRS, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, solar phase two is into the uh, city for review and EV charging and power resiliency. Once we do some power shutdowns, those will be up in operation up, up and operational. So we are very close to the end of both projects, um, except for the district office solar would need to be construction constructed. Some pictures over the next couple of slides. This slide is, is uh, pictures of all the new HVAC equipment that was implemented um, at the district office, cooling tower, chillers. This is what provides the comfort within the space and within the learning environments. Next slide. And then on the left, you see EV charging, docking stations, which is part of the power resiliency program, and solar and LED. So a lot of great work um, that the district has done to implement these projects. Um, and he, obviously, the pictures show that, that success. So to talk high level, the financial summary for all the phases, the district made an investment of $12.5 million in its infrastructure, um, obviously to recoup with the savings that would be uh, uh, produced from this program. And that includes, you know, the, the infrastructure improvement includes equipment, labor, DSA, all the elements, it's a turnkey program that needed to happen in order for this to come to fruition. Uh, the life cycle savings is projected to be 27 million over the life. And we're here to report that as of today, or as of March 2024, $537,000 have already been saved from your utility expenses, which is huge. And all of that money can go right back into the classroom and for other, for other supportive um, um, you know, initiatives that you have. Um, and this is without the solar being turned on. As you saw, the solar is not connected to PG&E. Once it is, um, you'll see even a greater savings um, for, for the uh, school district. And this comes at a time and I don't know if you've seen, you've probably seen it on your personal uh, uh, utility bills, but PG&E is charging more and more each year. This year for commercial uh, utility meters, it's going up over 20%. So that is a big hit for school budgets, specifically city budgets, public entities, period, is really trying to figure out how to hedge against that. And I'll talk about the IRA here in a little bit, which is the Inflation Reduction Act. But the district stands to receive $1.4 million for the work that is already being done back from the IRS. So that's $1.4 million that you could put into future, future clean, pro, clean energy projects, sustainability or infrastructure, or even back into the classroom, either way. Not only, does it, not only are these programs saving money in the $540,000 to date, but obviously the sustainability benefits as well that come along with this, which obviously the Green Schools Committee was very excited to, to hear about in terms of it. So quite a, quite a bit of improvement on the uh, uh, green environmental benefits. And then as you look ahead at infrastructure, the additional things that could be had, um, obviously additional renewable energy solutions. You already have solar on, on some of your sites. That could be expanded to other sites. Uh, battery storage, building electrification, even down to sports field lighting um, at various different sites to go to LED as well. And currently right now, there, there are a lot of technology LED on the sports field lighting has controls. So you can actually do different things for, for the uh, you know, anthem and, and scores and all these different technologies. So it's pretty cool. But uh, uh, quite a bit of infrastructure obviously left. And then where, where does the funding come for that? Obviously, the local bond, right, would be a very good uh, start with the deeper infrastructure. But you also have other opportunities to leverage with the bond, uh, potentially private sector funding, state funding, the CalShape program, which Climate Tech has been helping the district with. The next phase of that will, get, will give the district up to $6 million for HVAC improvements. Um, and we're on target uh, for that when they open that back up. And then the IRA funding, which is that Inflation Reduction Act. So we worked with staff to look at additional sites that could receive renewable energy and battery storage. And the district sets to make, could receive over $10 million, eight to $10 million in just federal funding alone as a reimbursement grant 
for doing future programs with renewable energy. That is above and beyond the 1.4 that you would get with the work that you've already done. Um, so pushing this for, for further, you know, meeting with Heather and uh, Dr. Contreras, Dr. Contreras um, to actually have these conversations as we move forward here in terms of what this really means. But that's a substantial amount of money. And if we go to the next page, a lot of districts are only getting that 30% base grant. And you have the opportunity to even get up to 50%, 60% in certain communities. So that's a quite a bit of money for obviously schools, energy, and hedging against the utility bills. So that's it for us. We just wanted to provide an update since it's been a few years and we wanted to show the savings to date and the funding available right now from the federal government that could come to this district for more clean energy. Thank you both. Um, do we have any public speakers to this item? We have one. Uh, Marilyn Garrett. Well, it all sounds very good, but is it? Electropollution is a huge problem, and that's what we're talking about here. These LED lights are biologically harmful, and I refer you to a book called The Invisible Rainbow, A History of Electricity and Life. And it shows that each time, it's by Arthur Furstenberg, each time there's been an increase in electropollution, there's been corresponding illnesses. Flus did not exist before electrification. There have been increased illnesses and increased <coughs> mortality rate especially since the Telecommunications Act of 1996 with wireless technology. I refer you also to Barry Trower, who worked in the British Secret Service in the 60s you, and 70s. I believe this is dangerous and a poor use of money. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. I will now bring it back to the board for comments, um, questions, and I'll remind the board this is a merely a report and discussion item. It is not an action item this evening. Trustee Bellano Scow. Uh, yes, we do have some problems with power outages. Uh, this year we had PV high lost power. And so is this, um, do you envision this, is, is this a way that when it comes to fruition, that the schools would be able, would have enough power to be able to stay in stay in service. So the two the this is happening all across the board. I mean, we're doing full site microgrid systems, which is full power backup for high schools, wastewater treatment plants. So that's been happening for a few years. For your specific sites within this program, Bradley and Calabasas, you will have the power needed to keep you know the students in session and learning through blackouts um, at at your sites, and that could be expanded to other district sites depending on the priorities given by the district. So this is power that we would be, PVUSD would own in a sense, and, and what would the relationship be with the grid in terms of the financial relationship? So, so the, the uh, uh, power resiliency at Calabasas, so when the power goes off, um, you actually will have what is called portable generators connecting to a docking station for the meters to actually operate the school. So when the, when the disconnect or when the automatic transfer switch senses that there's no power coming from the grid, it turns off that connection and turns on the generators immediately to actually power that. You also have solar PV there, um, but the solar PV can't provide backup power based on rules from PG&E because of safety concerns. Okay. Um, so. That's, that's the solution for your immediate element. Now that there's more money coming from the Inflation Reduction Act, you could look at a future battery storage in tandem, but that only gives you two hours, two to four hours, depending on your space. So there's a different you know, solutions for each, but now with the Inflation Reduction Act, you can get some more money from the federal government for those types of solutions. Thank you. Now, so when you say microgrid, do you mean per each site or could it 
Or is yes, that, so okay. Calabasas will have a, its own microgrid. Like it could operate without the utility right. um, as long as those generators are running. So you have, that's what a micro microgrid mm -hmm. is, just that site. I think it's very exciting. Those of us, uh, in, many of us in the unincorporated areas of this county have suffered from blackouts and higher rates from PG&E. Um, I won't go off about that, but this is an, a very important project and, and important for our district, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Trustee Dr. Holm. You just answered my question about the solar and the backup because I learned myself, you know, I had just put solar in and then it's like my power went out. And I'm like, hey, what the heck? Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it turns out they don't want to have it connected because of the workers are working on the line. So I was wondering how we were getting around that. So it sounds like the battery backup. And there's even more there. money for your house. Yes. You yes. State yes. and federal funding for that. So yeah. something to definitely consider. But I, I, I know, you know we heard so much from our, especially from you know, Bradley and Calabasas you know, during the outages, and that's, we have such a strong commitment to continuity of learning yeah. that, you know, that was really tough to, it's like, okay, we need to have a safe environment for our students to learn in. How can we work with this? And I, I really appreciate this path forward. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee DeSerpa. Are the microgrids sort of like power walls? Like, it, like <coughs> energy is stored there on the site and then it kicks in, or how does it work? So um, a microgrid is just a small um, site-specific ability to produce power. And it's not a battery storage, which is a power wall technology. It is actually, for, for Calabasas and Bradley specifically, it would be, it is generators um, connected into the grid or into the meters to provide power when the power goes off from PG&E. So when PG&E turns off the power, a squirrel runs over a line or something were to happen, um, it turns on the backup power right away and you can operate the rest of the school for a couple days um, for, you know, education. And I'm sorry, I missed something. So they're not gas power generators there. They are gas power they generators. They are gas They powered. are gas power generators, correct. Okay, yeah. And now with the new funding from the Inflation Reduction Act, it starts, battery storage starts to make more sense. Because when we looked at battery storage, because we were looking at both options, it was just far too expensive for the battery storage and for the time duration that was needed, because they only supply two to four hours, typically depending on how many batteries you have. But it gets, it's really cost prohibitive to do batteries. But now with the federal funding, that's something to look at with you know, new projects moving forward. Yeah, I, I think um, using some type of batteries rather than a generator would be a cleaner It'd way definitely to be do cleaner. it and less noise. What is happening? <laughs> um, can you remind me, so it, when we passed the first bond uh, in 2012, we did a bunch of solar projects at that time that were sort of shovel ready to go. And can you remind me of the schools that we have solar arrays on? Do you have a list of that? I do have a list of that, thank you. Um, Aptos, Aptos High, uh, Bradley, uh, Hall, and um, Watsonville High, and then obviously uh, Calabasas in the district office as part of our program is um, yeah. So Calabasas. I was just going through the list here, but yeah. Okay, so we have we have some room to put in some new solar arrays then. Correct, and there's roughly there's roughly 15 to 16 more sites that financially make sense to put solar PV. We've done the analysis, we've walked the sites, um, we've put it together, and that's how we came up with the numbers. Obviously, to claim about 10 million dollars in IRA grants. Okay. So I want to remind the district, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Contreras is, is watching, that when we um, had had these discussions to begin with, that some of the money that we were saving with PG&E on these solar arrays were to go into a fund to support our science programs here at the district. And so I'd like to see that continued. If we're going to be saving extra money, I'd like to make sure that money goes um, where it was promised in the first place. Great. Thank you. That's awesome. Any other board members? See none, and uh, Trustee DeSerpa, I'd like to encourage you to make sure you do follow up directly with Dr. Contreras on that and maybe have it brought back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for being here this evening. Thank you so much, appreciate it. 
I will now move us to item 6.2, expanded learning report. This report will be presented by our director of expanded learning, um, Ms. Littleton Bruno. And here she is. Welcome, thank you for being here. Good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent Sheckman. I'm Jen Littleton Bruno, the Director of Expanded Learning. And tonight I am giving the Expanded Learning Board Report. Expanded Learning, oh. <laughs> okay. Expanded Learning has five guiding principles. Provide equity and access, and opportunity and access. Ensure engaging activities and social emotional learning. Priority of culture, culturally specific and culturally responsive programming. A commitment to youth voice and leadership. And value to build upon student, staff, and community partner ecosystems and assets. Our funding, we have both state and federal funding, and we do not use any district general funds. So our federal funding is 21st Century Community Learning Center programs, and that's for our elementary and middle schools. We have after school safety and enrichment for teen program, our assets programs, and that's our Watsonville High School, so that's for both Watsonville High School and Parho Valley High School. For and then lastly, we have our ESSER three funding that we will be talking about later tonight, um, and that is for summer learning funding. Our state funding is our expanded learning opportunities funding, and then we have our ACES grants for our elementary and middle schools. So just to give you a little bit of a review of where expanded learning is as of this year. We are now at $41 million in grant in ELOP funding. Again, we do not use any district general funds. Our staffing, we have five support staff at the district office to manage this funding and to support the programs that you're gonna uh, be hearing about tonight. We, uh, full <clears throat> we have 55 full-time employees at our school sites running programs and working with students. Totally, we have, total expanded learning employees is just over 500 PVUSD employees. Those are both certificated and classified staff members. Right now, we're working with about 6,000 of our PVUSD youth in our expanded learning programs. Yearly, we're working with 8,000 family participants. We have 28 community organizations in our ecosystems that are working with our students weekly. And as of this year, we will have a total of 280 program days that we are providing services for our PVOSD students. The programs that we um, operate often were thought of as just after school program and um, due to the new funding, the expanded learning opportunities funding, we operate a large number of new programs over the last two years. Our first program is Breakfast Club, Midday, TK and K, After School Programs, Inner Sessions, Parro Passport, Outdoor Science School, Credit Recovery, Summer School, and our newest program, Parro Enrichment Camps. So I'm gonna go over each of our funding to give you a little bit of an idea of the schools that we're at and the number of students that we're serving. At the elementary sites, we are serving over 3,700 students a day. <clears throat> we have 14 grant-funded sites, both state and federal grants, and then with those new dollars, our ELOP funding, we're able to choose as a district to use those in our Aptos and Corlito sites to open up those school sites. So that brings us an additional four sites. In the elementary level, we are serving 18 elementary schools. 
In the secondary level, we are funded for seven schools. Our ELOP program allows us to go to an additional five sites for a total of 12 schools, serving over 2,600 students a day. I wanted to give you a little snapshot of what one of our school sites looks like. Each of our schools are very different and reflect our students and the culture of this school. This one is actually Alianza, but all of our programs are similar in what we focus on. We offer an academic homework time every day, an enrichment <coughs> time, and then a fitness time within our programs. At the elementary level, we have a huge network of partnerships such as El Sistema, the City of Watsonville with Motor Toys, Science My Way, uh, Friends of Santa Cruz Parks, Watsonville Wetlands Watch, who all come in and do a variety of on-site enrichment programming that students get to rotate through. At our middle school level, I really wanted to highlight EA Hall. Um, they are just shining. Ashley Euro in the EA Hall program <laughs> is flourishing this year. They are up to 160 middle schoolers choosing to stay after school. This week, if you were to pop your head in at EA Hall, you would see students in their cosmetology class learning nail tech skills on their little mannequin hands. Our EA Hall and our Chavez Middle School actually went biking in Nicene Marks this week. The students got to go. It's just so exciting that if you go onto our middle schools, you're going to see middle schoolers who are choosing to not go home and to choose to engage in safe, fun enrichment activities. At our high school level, things get a little bit different and look very different for us, but we're able to help um, ASP, ASB clubs, club programs, do credit recovery, and then on our Fridays, our, um, both of our grant-funded high schools, which is Watsonville High and PV High, are doing fun Friday activities. This Friday, if you're free at Watsonville High, they're making slime. And so they are engaging hundreds of students each week to not go home and to choose to stay in tie-dye shirts or do a succulent garden. And so it's been a really great way to bring collaboration to students in a fun way. Programs you might not know about. These are all brand new programs as of fall 2020 due to our expanded learning opportunities funding. We now offer Breakfast Club as of fall 2022 at our elementary sites. This program starts anywhere from 6.50 in the morning to 7 a.m. to be able to ensure that our elementary students are able to have a safe and supportive place to be. So if their parents are having to go to work, they're able to come in. They might do coding classes, Legos, a variety of homework support, and board games. Our other fun new program um, since fall 2022 is our mid day TKK program, also known as Lunch Bunch. And so those are those TKers and kindergartners get, that get done at 1130. They actually don't go home. They come with us. And the, the, this year, we have a new partnership with Lisa Sandoval in the child development program where many of those students are actually going to the preschools for three more hours after they're done with kindergarten. And then they join Expanded Learning with us. And Expanded Learning was able to um, transfer funds to the preschool to, uh, child development department to be able to pay for those students to get an additional time to do play-based learning. Our inner sessions are days when schools aren't in session. And so this year, we will have an additional 80 days of services to our students. So that's typically days, maybe teacher work days, Thanksgiving break, winter break, spring break, and summer summertime. And I just really want to um, highlight that we partner with the YMCA, Campus Kids Connect, the City of Watsonville's Camp Wow, and uh, Santa Cruz Parks and Rec's ACE program to be able to open these programs 
of minimum of nine hours of day of programming to our students. For spring break, we had over 400 students participate in a free nine hour day. This program holds my heart. It is our PARHO passport. And this program is where we bring families on field trips. So thinking about your typical field trip, a student might go to the Exploratorium and they come home and they're not able to engage their parent in conversation because their parents have never had access to these experiences. We wanted to bring that whole experience to our families. And so this program does just that. We take families and we do really fun field trips. This year we did 200 participants to Alcatraz. We will be, um, we do baseball. We're going to the Giants in May. We have um, Circus del Sol. Uh, this weekend we're bringing 1,600 participants. And so when these families go, they go as a family unit. Transportation is offered. If families do not want transportation, parking is paid for, and there is a food item provided as well so that families can do this and not have to worry about how they're gonna pay for rent or how they're gonna pay for food, and they can focus on being a family. Our hope that this will build our capacity and our relationships with our families so that they see us as an ally. Our credit recovery program for our high schools is going strong. We have over 500 students enrolled, and to date we have already recovered 1,800 units. So we are doing a lot of credit recovery after school. It also runs during winter session and summer school to ensure our students are able to make up the credits they need. We run both hybrid options where there's teacher teaching and online courses, and we also offer online courses Per our grant funding, those online courses do have to happen on a school site. That is due to our regulations and our funding. Another unique piece to our programming that we're able to offer our sites is our outdoor science school. So we have 18 schools, our 18 um, schools participating in outdoor science school. Expanded Learning pays a about $600,000 so that the school sites do not have to pay for outdoor science school and that all students are able to participate without fundraising. Summer school is just around the corner and I have great news to share with you. I just looked at the numbers before coming up here and we currently have 4,200 students enrolled in summer school. To give you an idea, last year we were at 2,800 at this time. By June, Jul July, when we ended summer school, we had 3,600 students last year. Our numbers are growing. Families want to participate, students want to be here. We had 270 teachers, certificated PVUSD teachers apply to work in our program and we are just looking forward to a wonderful summer school. We changed things around a little bit this year and we are opening 20 school sites so that students can stay in their community school for the most part and that teachers can often teach in their own classrooms. Our summer program is a nine hour day with 6.5 hours of instructional time. Our high school program will offer credit recovery. We will also offer credit retainment this year for ethnic studies to ensure that our students who may need ethnic studies before they graduate and looking how can they add it their senior year or they just wanna be prepared and take an extra class, we're gonna be offering that in our summer school program and we're very excited to be able to do that. And we can skip the video because I don't think I have time. Our next program, our next program is our Pajaro Enrichment Camps. And this is just gonna make a fabulous summer for so many students. We have space for 3,800 students to participate in enrichment programs. These programs are the same programs you would find in affluent areas that may cost hundreds to thousands of dollars. We will be taking 500 participants to UC Berkeley. The other 
program I want to highlight is our springboard program that will be taking 122 of our high school students to UC Berkeley or Cal Poly, where they will do spend two weeks on campus in the dorms learning about how to pick a major, going to other universities, and having opportunities to see how they can grow. We are so excited for all that Expand and Learning has expanded to, and we thank you for this time tonight to be able to share about our programs. Thank you, Ms. Bruno. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have Brandon Dinitz. Uh, good evening to the board. Uh, Brandon Denise, grievance officer for the PVFT. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak here tonight. I signed up for a few items, so this won't be the last time you see me I'm in it for the long haul. Um, I just want to come up and um, say that, you know, Jen is doing an awesome job. Um, to see some of my former students involved in this program, it's really awesome to see. Um, I don't know who they're playing when they go see the Giants, but if they're playing the Dodgers, I might volunteer to go to that one. Um, but I just wanted to point out that one challenge that some staff have when working the extended learning program is the taxes they pay. They pay a lot more taxes than they would traditionally otherwise pay. So you might see that you're getting paid $70 an hour, but then on your check, that's being taxed at a higher rate than you're used to. So I would encourage the board and the district to look at some non-monetary compensations, like what are some creative ways to get more staff involved? Because when you see $70 an hour and then you see your check, you're like, where did it all go? So just to, again, thank the program. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. And encourage the district and the board to look at some creative ways to get more participation. Thank you. Um, I will bring it back to the board for discussion, comments, and remind the board that this is uh, merely a, a report and discussion item, not an action item. Any comments or discussion from the board? Trustee Flores. I just want to thank you, uh, Jen, for the amazing job that you've done with extended learning. Um, I remember not too long ago, maybe four or five years ago, it really was just childcare, you know. And then, so if, and if you're lucky, you know, you'd get some help with homework if, if the site can manage that. But sometimes they were overwhelmed. And so this is an amazing um, change in just such a little, such a little time. Um, I have my three kids participate. Um, even my high schooler takes advantage of the tutoring, you know, that can be offered at Aptos High, um, which is amazing because sometimes, you know, getting a private tutor is not not really something you can do. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who um, helps out with extended learning. This is an amazing program, and our PBUSD students are just so lucky to have this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Anyone else? Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you, Jen. Um, testament to your work. This is a lot to organize, <laughs> so you must spend a lot of time, and you're obviously really good at your job. And everybody's talking about these programs in, in the area. So just thank you for all the hard work. It must be a quite a task to organize and, and do contracts with all these organizations, and it's really paying off. And it's really making uh, it's it's a good light on our district too uh, to see this and. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the comment uh, from Mr. Denise uh, as a freelance consultant. That's the name of the game on the tax uh, system that we pay. A question I think I've asked you before, but I think it might be good for people to hear it. How many teachers are, are participating or working in uh, expanded learning? Yeah, we have just about 250 te certificated teachers, and then the remainder of our staff are classified staff members in various um, positions. That's, so that's about a quarter of our teachers participating and, uh, and making some extra money. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. There we go. Thank you, Trustee Planoscow. Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. I'm going to echo what my colleagues have said. Usually I get ir irritated when I watch other board meetings and the board is thanking staff for doing their job. But in your case... You do a phenomenal job, and I, and all of us, I think. Well, I'll just speak for those the three of us. I mean, well, I'll speak for Jen too. Maybe I'll speak for everybody. 
we recognize that. This is a huge job. We, we pull down so much money in grants. Every dollar that's available, we're pulling down, and we're the envy of other districts, I think, probably in the region, maybe across the state, right? We are the largest in the region. Um, we actually are pulling in 25% of the dollars that go into Region 5, which is all the way through San Jose down to Greenfield. 25% of those dollars in Expand and Learning are straight to PVUSD. So I know that you're not doing that alone. We have people in fiscal that are helping, right, pull down some of this money and distribute it appropriately, et cetera. So to all your entire team who's managing this, to increase and improve opportunity for the kids of our region and our district, thank you very, very much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? So I, I just want to commend you and all the work you're doing and that you've been doing. And at this point, you've done under at least three different superintendents. And I look forward to what you continue to, to do under our next new superintendent, Dr. Contreras, seeing what you've been doing with that sort of instability that we've endured for the last year, pretty much. So I commend you for doing Thank that. You. And so continue the great work, and I look forward to hearing more again from you. Thank you all for your kind words. Thank you. Have a good evening. <clears throat> all right. I will now move us to item 6.3, the TK Roundup um, update. And this report will be presented by our Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, Ms. Monjeres. Transitional kinder. Okay. So, um, good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. Uh, my name is Claudia Monjaras, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to come and report out around our spring kinder roundup. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions and um, wonderings and lots of stuff out in the news and in the community, so I just wanted to make sure that um, we were being able to share out how it went with both our board and our um, community constituents. So um, just to preface, oops, before we go to that, just to preface um, before jumping into everything, I do want to kind of talk about what our purpose was behind that. Um, in terms of switching it from the paperwork piece from the site to the central office. Um, our early literacy coordinator actually at one of our, uh, at our early literacy collaborative meeting earlier this week actually had the perfect analogy for it. It's very similar to when you take your child to the doctor and um, for their shots, like the little kids, they go in for their shots, right? You take your child in and the whole idea is to make going to the doctor be a positive experience for the students, right? Or for the child. So when you take your kid in, it's not the doctor that's giving the shot, right? It's the nurse that's doing that piece. So that way the child is able to connect with the doctor and be able to be like, yeah, I wanna go back to the doctor, right? Kinda sucks for the nurse, but neither here nor there, right? The kid is gonna wanna go back because they make that connection with the doctor. So we wanted to kind of make that adjustment as well for the site piece, take out that paperwork piece and leave the connection piece for the site. Give them that opportunity to not have the parents go through that long paperwork thing and really make it like set up the time to have that connection between the site teachers, the administrators and the families. Another reason we did the shift is as our dual language programs are expanding from um, our four current sites and expanding out to more sites, we wanted to centralize the process and communication out around what our dual language programs are at the sites, how can parents um, get into those schools if it's not one of their neighborhood schools, and be able to have that process right then and there. So for example, some of those days we actually had parents who were not in, for example, the Freedom School area, but wanted to attend the dual language at Freedom. So we were able to help them do the transfer paperwork right then and there, instead of sending them back someplace else to do that and then have to come back again for it. So it, it 
offers us the opportunity. We have everything right here. Let's get that process done in one stop. Um, and then um, the other piece to that is looking at um, this time of the year at sites, it can be really rough and very tight, right? So being able to take off that paperwork piece at the site level of having the office staff had to spend the time going through and entering all of those things and dealing with all of the cumes, because like I said, it gets tight at the site and typically that work gets pushed back later in towards the summer. Um, so this allows it to happen faster for them. Um, we're doing all of that piece for them, getting all the cumes together, and then we send those cumes out to the site. Students are already in the system, all the paperwork's there. We're doing the chasing around of getting immunization cards and doctor's appointments and the dental thing and all of that stuff. We take that off of the site and then we do all that chasing around. Okay, so we also are greatly appreciative of all the feedback that, rece that we received from our sites and, um, and people in the community that didn't have students in, we in, who don't have students in our community but were involved in the process. Our team who organized Kinder Roundup actually came together after that first two March dates and went through and analyzed all of the data or all of the information that we were getting. Um, all of us on the team received phone calls and emails, so we co uh, collected all of that, looked at it collaboratively, and then went through and analyzed where are the opportunities for us within that process to do better for the April months. And as I'm sure you guys read in the newspaper, PVUSD can do better. And yes, they're right, we can. And I feel like we did the second round for sure. And we are continuing to analyze even the April process um, to improve it for next spring. Um, on this slide, this is just a summary of the different areas that we went through and looked at to make improvements for the April months, April dates. Uh, one of the things that we did because we, you know, it was very crowded that first day, lines were horribly and unrealistically and disrespectfully long. So we did look at dividing up the number of schools for those la for the last two dates that we did last week. Um, we um, had eight schools on one day and nine schools on the other day. We did receive um, communication from some of the sites like on different days like, hey, I can't go that day that my school's assigned. I'm gonna come the other day, not a problem. We didn't turn anybody away on either day. So if they couldn't come, they still had that opportunity. Um, as you can see the numbers, um, and again, because the lines were horribly long, um, March registration over the course of the two dates, unfortunately we were only able to serve 346 students um, enrolling. However, with the um, adjustments that we did to our process for the April, we were able to get to 515 families between the, on the other two dates. Um, and we kept the lines way shorter. Um, our average, um, as you guys have heard in March, unfortunately we had families waiting in line for to go through the whole process probably took them some of them about four hours, which is obviously not what we want to have as the as the paperwork experience for our families. In April, we um, one of the things that we did to data collect is we logged time and start time for each of the families and end time of when they started the um, entered for roundup and then when we left. What we found was if parents had done the online registration piece prior to coming, then the average for the family to move through the whole process was anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes from, from hi, I'm walking through the door to I'm turning my folder in, thank you, have a great day, type of thing. Um, if they hadn't done the online piece, they had the option to stay. So we were giving them the opportunity, if you wanna stay and have us help you with that online piece, we can do that. That typically added another 30 minutes to that time. Um, and then if they were like, nope, I gotta go, I have to get back to work, or you know, I've got an appointment, which we did do that with, so many of our families did have that, then um, one of the adjustments we had made is on the student survey piece. Uh, we asked for them to fill in the critical information we need so that we could start the online process for them. Um, let's go to the next one. So um, 
Going back to this, we did schedule our times a little differently. We put 7.30 to 6 p.m. However, both days we were able to open the doors early. We had families get in line at 7.15, and as soon as our families got in line, we went ahead and opened the doors instead of waiting till 7.30. We didn't want to have them standing out there for 15 minutes just staring at us through the glass. So we're like, let's just go ahead, get the doors open, let's get people moving through. We also had families um, come late after the six o'clock time, later than that, and we did not turn them away. We continued to have them help. We had them come in, because um, we did have some families that are like, I tried to get here as soon as I could, um, but we went ahead and let them come on in, and we helped them out too. So we stayed late on both days to help families. Um, we did spread out. Um, we used the outside area. We had backup um, rooms reserved in the building in case the weather went south, but we spread out between the front grass area at the front of the building, um, outside area where our, um, there's like picnic tables outside the boardroom, and then we had less uh, tables in the boardroom to reduce the noise and the heat for the families, because that was one of the pieces that we got feedback. Brought um, tents and shade in. We had waters and snacks for the students. Um, Fitness for Life, thank you, Jim Bruno, um, organized out. So they came and we had a lot of a really nice big play area that siblings and some of the students took advantage of while their parents were in the lines that their child didn't need to sit with them in. Let's go to the next one. Next slide. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing that we did to help make the smoother transition in is we had a welcome table and then a check-in table. So we were able to go through Let's make sure, A, you've got your kid with you, you got your paperwork, okay, great, now go to check-in. And we had multiple stations for both of those to help um, expedite. We had double the amount of um, welcome, cha welcome tables and check-ins to help that process go smoother. Next one. Um, we are gonna continue to offer registration opportunities because we know not everybody could come. Um, so we have one at the district office that will be opening May 13th, run through August 2nd. Even when schools are closed, they'll have an opportunity to come in. That will run from 7 a.m. to 3.30 by appointment. And then we have the wellness center next door to EA Hall where they can come between 10 and 6 on uh, Thursdays and Saturdays. And those are dates where they can do their welcome over at the sites and I can talk more about that if there's questions. Thank you. Do we have any speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have one. Bobby Pelt. Um, thank you. Uh, to all the uh, young people in the room, thank you for sitting through this presentation and uh, the last two. They're making you wait, they're hoping you leave, and you're still here. Because you know how important this is. You guys are the best. Thank you. I'll now bring it back to the board for discussion. Okay. Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, thank you. Sorry. you know, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I, I know you're. You know, I I heard it as well from the north and from the south. And uh, I, you know, you saw my email, and I would like you know to put my two cents in and to say bring it back to the sites. You know, you're, you're, you're making parents who live in Real Del Mar drive down Highway 1 to the towers. And we all know how coming back after 2 p.m. on Highway 1, you, you're making parents who live in Las Lomas and there's only one bus route to Watsonville, the MST. And then you're making them go to the towers. And then you're making parents, you know, who live, you know, around Mini White E Hall you're making them either drive or ride a bus to the towers and wait when it's proven that 60, at least 60 to 70% of the children that attend Watson High Mini White E Hall Radcliffe walk to school. And so, you know, I, I know you, I, I saw you're doing the sites so about maybe, you know, if there's, if you look at those hours, you know, we're in, you know, the strawberry season is starting and, you know, parents are trying to work um, they're, they're already out in the fields, you know, five, six, seven o'clock. 
you know, they're working all to, all the way to six or seven, and so those hours are kind of not reasonable for them. So if if we can find a way to, I attended Mini White E Hall in Watsonville High, and my parents were able just to sign me up. And what what we're doing right here is we're making it more difficult. You know, in March we had you know a certain number, but the number increased in April, and and so maybe next year if. Yeah, I know you're trying. If we can make you know make it more accessible for parents just across the street to go you know to Mini Mart or to I'm not sure how the schools are in Aptos or at Hall School, but just you know before they go to work or after you know just sign them you know if they're able to sign them up. So I just wanted to say you know thank you. I know you're trying, it, but I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. No, and I appreciate that. Um, that is actually one of the things that we were looking at for next year. Like we did the four days this year, so we're still looking at doing four days for next year, but also looking at how the schools are clustered and also locations. So that is one of the things that we've gotten feedback from that we are looking at for next year for sure. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee Dr. Holm. Kind of, you know, just thinking, I'm, I'm uh, reassured to hear like the, the feedback you know being received and, and, and taken and, and trustee Dodge jr. Thank you for bringing up those points. I think they're really important. I just Is that a little better? Yeah. Okay, thank you for letting me know that um, And you know, I would imagine that my fellow trustees received a lot of the same emails that I did um, And I, I just want to say that it would be really easy for us to sit up here and you know, point fingers and assign blame, you know, all under the guise of accountability and responsibility. And doing so, you know, we could score some political points. But I think doing so would be a missed opportunity to acknowledge the power of public advocacy um, and the influence that it has. So, like to the members of the public who brought up concerns about the process, thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope you're hearing, you know, that, that changes are being made and that. You know, we as, as trustees have, have heard those concerns. Um, and for those who told us what you liked about the process, that's just as important. Um, it's really easy to overcorrect um, if you don't have complete information. And in my discussions with Mr. Sheckman, I, I very much appreciated the willingness that you and district staff have been in taking an honest look on how we could do better. You know, there were, clearly there were some things that did 100%. not work and some unintended consequences. Yep. I think it takes courage to change a process and it takes a lot of integrity to admit when plans don't go as expected. And furthermore, I think it takes both to take steps to adjust appropriately. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, that's what responsibility looks like. Um, I do agree that we need to learn from how this year's uh, roundups went and I look forward to future, you know, presentations or reports on, on what we learned and how things got better. Yeah. Thank you. And then just to add on that, Dr. Holm, I appreciate that. So we, um, this slide in particular, in terms of uh, inviting the board, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to make this um, these dates available. So th the sites are all scheduling their welcome to kinder piece and we'd love to have you guys come and be there during that time. I think it would be a great opportunity to connect with our, um, our families and our, new, our newest students. Um, like just to give you an example, like with Rio, they're doing it on a Friday afternoon for an hour. They get to have the fun time at the park that's at the base of campus, do some activities there. They'll get to go into the classroom. So it'll be a more intimate piece. Um, so just to invite all of you to, to attend your sites. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Bolano Scow. Yeah, thank you for this discussion. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Was there a, a savings component to why these changes were done this year? Is that was that part of the th thinking? And savings in terms of money? Yeah. No, it wasn't about the money piece. It was literally about the programming and about the streamlining of the uh, paperwork, the time efficiency piece of that. Um, those were the driving factors of it. There, um, when we do roundups individually at the sites, there are times where um, our community partners that, that uh, participate, it's hard sometimes for them to get to all, like, you know, 16 of those. And so when we have those four dates, it's easier for them to come and be there for our students. Um, 
And it also, you know, when we're talking about, um, like for example, our migrant seasonal Head Start, they were also doing their registration um, at the same time. So there was that opportunity for our families who were coming in to make appointments with them. They would do that piece and then they would come downstairs and finish up the registration process. Whereas in the past, they would come to the second floor for migrant seasonal registration piece and then have to go back to a different building at a later time. So it's for efficiency. Okay. All right. Well, th no, thank you for the explanation. Uh, one feedback I got, and maybe some of my colleagues got it, they appreciated the improvement but felt it was a little impersonal and mm -hmm. because it wasn't, they had an older child and they went to the school, it was much more personal. And, and the only, I think why it's important is because when we have the concern around declining enrollment, mm -hmm. which but when you have TK though, I've looked pulled at some of the numbers and it's actually not, it's gonna help quite a bit. And I always feel like we're always recruiting, right? All of us here at the district, whatever our role is, our title. And so I know this is gonna be exciting. This is positive that we're opening up these, expanding these programs. So whatever we can do to get people excited about our district and wanna stay, uh, is important. So, so thanks for your work and thanks for the questions uh, from my colleagues. I agree with those as well. And with that, um, in terms of numbers, that declining enrollment thing is one of the pieces that we were looking at. So between the four dates, we actually had a total of about 861 families enroll, which when you look at how many kindergartners we currently have, we're at 1148. So we've already hit 75% of our current kinder enrollment to match numbers which, um, and we're not done, right? Because we still have between now and the beginning of school year to continue to recruit families to join. So it's giving us those pre-numbers and giving us a good idea to match our FTEs for the sites as well. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Bolanos Grove. Trustee DeSerpa. Um, how are we doing with numbers so far? Is it what we expected or? It's pretty on point. Usually, I mean, again, it, devary, it varies by site. There are some sites who, when they do registration, and even within that 861 that we pulled, there's going to be more numbers for some sites than others, um, just as it would be if they had done it at the site. Typically, though, if you want to look at an average across the schools, most of the time it is anywhere from a one half to two thirds of kinder students come to Roundup during Roundup at the site. And then the rest of the students come over spring and then summer and then just, you know, that day before school starts or even that first week they're rolling into sites. So it's right pretty much on point. I mean, we're at 74, 75% really of where we are, where we're expecting. Okay, I know that we're experiencing declining enrollment. So I was yeah. curious if the numbers are looking good or yeah. seem declined. Yeah. Yeah. For kinder, we're about on point where we okay. should be. The only thing I'll say is as a mom who's had lots of kids in the school schools, it was really nice to do it at the school site because it's really your introduction to the school staff and if they're very welcoming and the principal's mm -hmm. there introducing herself and welcoming the children, it just makes you feel good. And so I think that is what is lost in like p pushing people to the DO. Well, that's so that's that part isn't going away. So that's where each site is actually doing a welcome to kinder at their sites. I understand. So they're still, they're still going and doing that at the sites where they're having that more intimate piece I with get the it. teachers. Yeah. I get it, yeah. I know that you're doing that, but if parents are on the fence about where to send their kids, mm -hmm. right, um, I think it's important that it happens at the site and that people feel welcome there. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? Um, so I'll just add, um, as we are quickly running out of time on this item, um, I think there are still plenty of lessons to have been learned here um, that can be learned going forward. I would agree with um, some points that Trustee DeSerpa and Trustee Dodge Jr. made. I think there's still a lot of added value and benefit um, for a lot of reasons as to why to have this at the school site, including some sustainability issues and forcing parents and families to have to commute out of their home-based school. I'm just not sure that that's the best. So thank you for your time on this, and that'll conclude this item. We'll now move to item seven, um, visitor non-agenda items. This is a time for public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. 
Please know that through the bound, that the Brown Act prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items. However, we are listening. Each speaker will have one minute. Do we have any public comments this evening? Yes, we do. We have uh, 41 under 7.1, but I want to clarify, I have four cards here that don't have an item to speak to. So I'm going to call your name. If you can clarify what item in particular you're speaking to, please. Brogan Dahl? Dahl? Uh, this one right here. 7-1. Yeah, if you could please uh, write the item that you're speaking to on the corner of the card so we know where to designate your speak. I appreciate that. Thanks. Deborah Tosti? Testi? Deborah? No, Deborah. Richard Vasquez? Here. What item are you speaking to, sir? Uh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Mariachi Women Foundation. So are you speaking under 7.1? Beg your pardon? 7.1, is that what you're speaking yeah. to? Okay. And then last, Ron Sandage. No Ron Sandage. All right, that uh, brings us up to 43 in the first three. Call you up, uh, Edward Montesino, Jessica Gonzalez, and Tony Nunez. Uh, good evening, and thank you for using our facilities. You're welcome to use in many, any time. Um, I just uh, came here to acknowledge the great work that uh, Murray did around the district. Thank you for helping out, and you know, in a in a time of need, you had done a lot of good work, and we continue to work with, uh, a, you know, the school district because you know, my, for me personally, the um, uh, the school is in my heart. Uh, you know, my kids grew up in a school. My my, I still have a a young girl that goes to Rolling Hills. Um, that is a wonderful school, and uh, you know, uh, doing really well. And uh, I and I also want to report out that we're wor uh, working to get a, you know a beacon light over a landmark in my district. So we're going to get a beacon light for people to cross the street. And we're also working with the school district. Hopefully, in the near future, with Rancliffe, working with um, do another beacon light there for safety uh, safety reasons. Um, you know, these uh, we take uh, safety reasons and uh, uh, really seriously. We want to work with uh, all you all in the school. Thank you very much. Hello board, my name is Jessica Gonzalez and I'm here again to talk about the CRE contract. Students are here on a school night again to take action. We are here because we have support from our teachers and fellow members. We want to support from you guys too. This is about us the students wanting to learn about our history. If you guys would only come to our classes and see how important ethnic studies is to us. We also want to request a special board meeting regard regarding only the CRE contract and the cessation of the suppressing the free speech of the public. As you can see, we have come multiple times here. So please, um, please help us and find a solution. Thank you. No Tony, no Tony Nunez. All right, next three. Uh, Bobby Marchesal, Chris Webb, and Richard Vasquez. Good evening, board. Uh, assist, um, interim Soup Sheckman, I want to thank you for your time uh, that you've been here. It's been great to see you on campus and in the community. Appreciate your involvement and also enjoyed your uh, music beforehand. Uh, thanks for the mariachi band as we were walking in today. Um, I am here again about the CRE uh, contract, and I will say that the flow of this meeting has been very disheartening, uh, the time that we're at before public comment shows up. I'll leave that at that. Um, I am concerned about the, uh, I mean, we don't know everything that happens on your side, but from this side, uh, that we're leaving this in the hands of the new superintendent does not seem to set them up to win. Uh, our current 
interim encouraged you to do the contract. It was set up under our former superintendent. This was purely a board made decision. This was not uh, under the direction of any superintendent and therefore I think the board needs to take responsibility and needs to make that choice and bring that forward. It was not, as was said at the last meeting, something you voted against. It died for want of a second. There was no vote. Bring it forward, have the conversation, please. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Mr. Murray for his work uh, with the PMS field. And I would just like to remind the community that uh, Renaissance could still use a field. And uh, it's a, a safety issue to have the championship winning team there practicing on the current field. And I'll also add that um, when the last survey data that we have showed that the staff and students really did want a field, but they didn't want a staff room so much. Um, also at the last board meeting, I was pretty disturbed to see that only one board member um, subscribes to the all-American idea of innocent until proven guilty. I'm talking about the personal necessity days. And those personal necessities can come up at any time. So to have, um, it's just the, the way things are operating right now, that's not making for a positive work environment when you can't have your personal necessity day. And if you're gonna leave it to um, an HR person, that sets the district open to, lie, to litigation just in case like inequities come up or hostile work environment or quid pro quo situations. It reminds me of our Keenan training. We, we learned that you don't want that kind of situation. Thank you. Thank you to the one board member, whoever it was, who supported the teachers. Richard Vasquez, you're up. Yes, good evening. Again, my name is Richard Vasquez. I'm a board member with the Mariachi Women's Foundation, and I'm here to let you uh, know about a concert we're having at the Mellow Center on May 10th. These are students in your district, and um, we're proud to work with these students because they're, many of them are poets and written poetry. Their poems will be turned into mariachi songs by mariachi divas. They're a Grammy award-winning mariachi from Southern California. And this is the third year they've been playing at the Mellow, this group. So um, Bob uh, Gomez, one of your uh, retired trained teachers, has helped us uh, and the young people with the poems. And we've just, in the last week, we've received calls from Fresno, uh, uh, Hollister, and Salinas that want to come to support the young people that are putting this together, particularly the, uh, the, the poems that are now going to be music, uh, mariachi music. So, thank you. All right, next three, Chris and Spencer. Austin Martin and Karina Moreno. Hello, my name is Kristen. I've got two students at Rio and an incoming kindergartner. I guess I should have spoken before. But I am here to ask that Kindergarten Roundup go back to the sites. It was extremely difficult only having four dates to choose from. I had to take time off of work. I had done everything on parent view and coming to the district. I had to stand in lines at tables just to be presented with forms that I had already turned in and done or to be asked a single question. And when I answered no, I just got it check off and to go. So the only reason that I went and spent an hour not counting drive time and taking time off of work was for a 20 minute assessment that was outside, it was impersonal, although the staff was very kind. And I just feel like it was a missed opportunity for my child to get to see a prospective classroom and a teacher and to have that one-on-one -on -one time to get excited about the school. So I really ask that maybe keep it as an option for people that want in-person registration and need assistance, but otherwise please give us the option of keeping it as our home school. Hello again, my name is Austin Martin. I've been to five of these board meetings now, asking you to please bring back the CRE contract, and still you have not listened to your community when we ask you to bring it back. We have tried every way to make our voices heard. We have spoken in emails, we have spoken at board meetings, we even invite you to our classrooms, and still no conversation. So I like to propose the idea of having a CRE contract only board meeting, which we can just discuss it, where you guys can discuss back and have a discussion about it instead of having us talk to you guys and like not talk to back. 
Um, I would also like to ask you, what more do you need to, for us to do? We have come to the board meetings, you know. We seek on the emails, and still, no, nothing works. I, but I will not give up. I will keep continuing to come to these board meetings to ask you to please bring it back. Me and my fellow peers will keep coming back. And I'd like to thank uh, Trustee Daniel Dodge uh, for trying to move this up and not having it to sit through two hours of no public comment. Thank you. Buenas noches, my name is Karina Moreno. Um, and I want to try to say everything that I want to in, in one minute, but felicidades, Marie Shekman. Thank you so much for, for taking up the mantle and, and doing what you've done. Um, I also want to point out, I'm here till 9.2 because I get to see an incredible human being, Jenny Gonzalez Huerta, come and present to you guys today. Um, on the March 13th um, meeting, she was nominated, it was announced, she was nominated for the Every Student Succeeding Scholarship, and just a few weeks ago, she won a journalism scholarship. So you guys are in for a really good treat, getting to meet and hear from Jenny Gonzalez Huerta again. <laughs> Um, and I'm also here to support all of the students who continue to come and advocate and just a huge shout out to all of them for coming and really standing in their voice. I know that you say that you've heard them, but they hear you through all of the little actions that you've done to not acknowledge them and sit in conversation with them. So you've started a movement. I don't know if you realized, but thank you. Buenas noches. All right, next three, uh, Mateo Rodriguez. Uh, the next one's kind of illeg illegible. It's, uh, I'm gonna say, is it Omar De Solo, De Solo? Omar Delgado. Delgado, sorry, thank you. And Carol Turley. Uh, good evening, school board. My name is Mateo Rodriguez, and I'm the current president of Empower Waspool. And as student trustee uh, Romero Maya mentioned, we are a youth-led program fighting for youth substance abuse in the community. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about my personal experience with youth substance abuse in the community. I see it a lot uh, around our school, especially in the bathroom. I remember one time during my sophomore year, as I was going to class and passing period, I stopped by the bathroom and I saw a group of guys just huddled around uh, the sink and as I went to go wash my hands, I had to maneuver myself around them to uh, go ahead and wash my hands and when I left, uh, one of them stopped me and said, hey, I don't want to see you in here again. And I, th at that point, it infuriated me and it was in one of the reasons why I joined Empower Watsonville in order to stop use substance abuse in this community and I hope that you can help, uh, help us achieve that goal. I also want to say thank you, uh, Mr. Sheckman, for stepping up and being the interim superintendent. Thank you for your time. Uh, hello again, uh, school board meeting. My name is Omar Delgado, Vice President of Empower Watsonville. And to follow up, Mateo, uh, I just wanted to let you know that we've accomplished a lot for Empower Watsonville. Um, in, the la in the last year, some of the good stuff that we've done is we were able to give a workshop out for parents to understand um, how to tell if their students on if their child's on substances and how to um, how to help them with Narcan if they overdose and as well we have a good social media following um, to help inform the people the community about the resources for mental health and substance abuse and we would love to work with you guys and build a relationship to get your view on substances, not only in our district, but in the whole community of Watsonville. Thank you for your time and what you do for our amazing district. Good evening, my name is Carol Turley, candidate for trustee. I mostly came this evening because I wanted to express my appreciation for Murray Sheckman and for stepping up for this past year and trying to get this school district kind of going in the right direction. So thank you for your efforts, sir. And I strongly encourage you, you have some amazing young people in this room who are practicing democracy and demonstrating that they care about their education. And I just hope that you all recognize that and want to partner with them. You're here for them. So let's listen to them, eh? Yeah. 
All right, next three, Brogan Dahl, Hilda Gazanfari. And the next card has two names, so you guys can decide which one of the two can come up or is going to come up and speak. I have an Ava Banuelos and a Nicholas Yurtone. Yurtor. I just go. Okay, I'm coming here today uh, with three hats on. One hat is my educator hat. I teach ninth grade ethnic studies at Watsonville High. Um, I'm also a parent. I have a sixth grader at Rio Del Mar Elementary School, and I am the daughter of an educator at EA Hall Middle School. Um, brief note on the CRE, I do not want my daughter going to Watson or to Aptos High learning that white supremacy doesn't exist. I don't want her going to Watsonville High learning that um, the genocide happening in Palestine is not real. Those are false statements and that's what is uh, being suggested through the new curriculum. And it's not only you know, incorrect, it's also very scary. Um, as a daughter, uh, I would like to speak on behalf of my mother's um, special ed program, which is one of the greatest Thank programs. Thank you, Brogan. Is time up? Yes. I thought I got two minutes. One. Okay, Sorry. I'm I'm going to keep talking. Wrap it up. Okay, uh, students, this is an example. What's happening with my mom is an example of ableism and ageism. Um, my Good evening, this is Hila Ghazanfari. I'm here today for two reasons. One is my concern regarding the CRE contract. I feel like you're letting all our requests and concerns fade in the background, and I just had a question. One of the main purposes of having a school board is to have student voices be heard and listen to our concerns. Then why are you not listening to us? When are we gonna be heard? How long more do we have to wait and request? I'm here now to request a special board meeting specifically on the CRE contract, and we will not stop. We will show up to every board meeting until you answer our requests. My second concern is regarding the PB High not having a theater. I would like to invite all the board members to our PB High talent show this Friday at 6.30 at the Mala Center, and we hope you make it and see how hard our performing arts students are working in their classes to put on a show for you guys. And how nice it will be to just perform in our own performing arts center versus like going all the way to Watsonville to downtown, because it's pretty far if you didn't know. And so I hope to see you all on Friday, and I hope you kind of change your mind in kind of letting that theater process go on. And thank you so much. Hi, um, we're here from Aptos High and we came to talk about the PVSD balloon ban. So we know that in 2021 there was a dedication to reduce plastic waste and in that balloons were banned. Um, we're addressing this because we have graduation and other events coming up where we feel that balloons would add a lot to the events. And we are pitching bio, we pitched that the board could bring up biodegradable balloons because while normal balloons are made out of latex that does degrade, they are infused with other materials that don't and biodegradable balloons will not cause long-term harm unlike normal ones. And our main proposal is that we are proposing a clause to the general PVSD ban of balloons to maintain the protection of our environment. We would keep the balloons inside so they don't fly into the atmosphere and harm birds and other animals. We'll make sure they are securely in place and when disposed in the trash, the balloons will decompose over time. And basically we just wanted that to be brought up. Thank you. All right, next three. Yunana Lopez, Eden Gonzalez, and Martha Flores.
Are these folks in the uh, room tonight? Eden, Yunana, and Martha? Come on up, Martha. Or as you were called in order, that's fine. Hi, good evening. We're celebrating a great principal today, Mr. Sheckman, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Woo, but life happens, and I'm now a very proud Freedom Elementary Dolphin. So I am here celebrating another amazing principal, Mr. Gerardo Morales. I'm here representing hundreds of parents that couldn't be here tonight with the sole purpose of asking the board to reconsider and change their decision to dismiss our amazing, kind, hearted, loyal, and dedicated principal, Mr. Morales. Everyone is flabbergasted with the board's decision to replace him, and it is my new duty, not only as a parent, but as an active and concerned community member to voice the imminent change that this will cause to the staff, the parents, and our children in our school. And it will not be a positive one. If this is a decision based on performance or merely politics unbeknownst to us, I ask that you take in consideration that we're all human and we all have room for learning and improving. I'm sure he will be even better, if not perfect, if allowed to stay. We don't want him to ever be replaced, and I know he does not want to either. Education is imperative for everyone, big or small, and Mr. Morales knows this, and is why our school thrives with possibility, positivity and success stories, and it's because of our dear and beloved principal. Please don't take him away from our children. They need him, and we know what's best for them. God bless you all. I started speaking. One, our stakeholders are our parents and the students of this community. Yet parents are not allowed to participate in the upcoming interview panel for EHO Middle School Principal position. This reject and rejection has been hurtful to our parents. They were looking forward to participating in this panel. I ask you, when did this change occur and when did you notify us, the community? To clean up the disaster left at EA Hall, parents have stepped up to address the mess that was left. They have shown up to work with the district, but now they are being marginalized in this important process of selecting a principal at EA Hall School. Furthermore, before you, you have an example of an article from the Pajaronian where life skills uh, teacher uh, and students participated in Mi Casa Es Tu Casa uh, community art display. Peri long periods of hard work with our uh, parents and students. And now you want to dismantle this program? Accountability, please. You have an ELL -E -L -L example of the travesty that happens to our ELL students in our community. Four, I want accountability. May I please have the budget, a transparent budget Thank of you, the last two years for E Hall School, please. Thank you for your time. All right, next three. Sochil Silva, Ruby Esqueda, and Nat Lowe. Hi, good evening. My name is Ruby Esqueda. I'm a parent of Freedom Elementary School, and I'm here to please ask you to reconsider removing um, Principal Gerardo Morales from the school as a principal. He is one of the best principals, and I know he is very dedicated to all his students. Um, he greets every student in the morning as they come, um, at saying, um, what are you? And the kids respond, you are amazing, we are amazing, and he's always there with a smile. He is always there for parents. He encourages parents to attend meetings and to particip participate in the school as much as he can. Yo 
Ah, buenas noches, mi nombre es Xochil Silva. Yo vengo aquí representando a algunos padres de la Escuela Freedom. Este, queremos... Uh, good evening, my name is Xochil Silva. I am here representing some of the parents for uh, Freedom School. Um, queremos pedir que el director se quede con nosotros porque para nosotros es un buen director. Nunca hemos tenido un director como este anteriormente. We're asking to um, keep uh, our principal because we've never had a principal as good as the one we have right now. Juntamos aproximadamente, sé que para ustedes a lo mejor son pocos, 300 firmas de los padres de su escuela Freedom School solamente hoy en la mañana al salir y a levantar a los niños de la escuela. Yeah. We, um, we, I don't know if this is too many or too little for you guys, but we have collected 300 signatures this morning as kids were being dropped off and in the afternoon when they were uh, picked up. Uh, that's what we did just today. Para nosotros, en lo personal, para mí es algo muy, he sentido algo muy desagradable porque ha sido para nosotros el mejor director. He pasado por dos directoras anteriormente. So to me, this is a really hard thing because this is the best principle that I've, um, that I've dealt with. I had two previous principles. Mi hijo está ahorita en la universidad, pasó por dos directoras de las cuales no estuvimos de acuerdo con algunas cosas que hacía, pero este director nos ha ayudado a creer en él, porque en las mañanas él se levanta y cada día a las, a las mañanas sale y les los saluda a los papás, los saluda a los hijos, en la tarde sale y nos saluda. Por eso queremos pedir que se quede con nosotros. I didn't have the same experience with the previous principals. My son is already um, in college. And with this principal, he greets everybody in the mornings. He's there for the parents. He's there for the kids. And the same thing in the evenings. He's out there just um, saying goodbye to everybody. That's why we're asking for him to stay. Gracias. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Nat Lowe, Area 7. I'm here for the eighth time. It's been seven months, almost a full academic year of the Ethnic Studies program being disrupted because trustees Acosta, Soto, Flores, and Deserpa, you have placed your own agendas over the, and your own comfort over the best interests of the students. You say that this, you know that this is a priority for the community, but your actions do not show it. When you first dropped the CRE contract, you said that you're going to look into other ethnic studies consultants, but you haven't for, six, for seven months. You said that your decisions wouldn't impact the program or the students, but you had a new teacher who was promised the professional development and training that she needed to teach ethnic studies, and she didn't get it. She came to the board meeting and told you that, and that lack of, of support and training had consequences in the classroom. And now she's been transferred without replacement so that we have Aptos High students who wanted to take ethnic studies literature next year who can't do that. And this is a class that they need in order to graduate because you voted to make it so ahead of the, the state's timeline. So teachers and students are being harmed by your decisions. Thanks, and Nat. that doesn't seem to be matter to you. So we're going to work to get you out of Next three, Griselda Munoz, Eli Davies, and George Lopez, Jorge Lopez. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Griselda Muñoz, vengo en representación de mi hija y de muchos padres de familia, así como de muchos pequeñitos de la escuela Freedom Elementary. Uh, good evening, my name is Griselda Muñoz, Muñoz and I am here representing uh, my child and many other parents from uh, Freedom Elementary School. Queremos que el director Gerardo Morales se quede con nosotros porque nos gusta su entusiasmo, la entrega que él tiene para la escuela, este, la motivación que nos da. Yo, mi hija, como les digo, va en kinder y estoy muy activa en la escuela porque él me motiva a, a participar en los eventos que tiene en la escuela 
y pues yo veo la entrega que él tiene cada mañana, cada tarde, este, está muy involucrado con nosotros. We want him to stay to, um, he is a really good person who is fully there for everybody. We see him, uh, he motivates everybody, he motivates me, my child is going to kinder, and I am very involved, and it's because of his enthusiasm, and we want him to stay. Gracias a todos, y espero reconsideren esta decisión. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you reconsider this decision. Good evening, board. My name is Eli. I use they, them pronouns. I'm here again to say, please put the CRE contract back on the agenda and renew. Uh, please listen to your students. Listen to everyone is here. L listen to the parents and the students who are showing up for other issues that matter to them. These are the people that you need to answer to. These are the people you need to listen to. These are the people who also deserve answers from you. And that's, that's it. I mean, we're gonna keep coming back. They need ethnic studies. That's it. <laughs> Jorge Lopez, are you out there? Good evening, everybody. I'm here in representation of Freedom Elementary School requesting that you reconsider the dismissal of the, the uh, principal. Uh, I've been at that school for about three years, roughly, um, engaging with the students in school and uh, school staff. I've realized that the director, the principal, uh, is very committed to the school um, from greeting every single student in the morning, over 500 kids by name, hi, how are you doing, um, what's new, just engaging them, making them feel welcome and cared for. And honestly, I wouldn't want that to be taken, care, taken away from our kids. Um, I think there's, well, as you can see, a lot of people here from school um, doing the same thing I'm doing. Thank you. All right, we're gonna pick up the pace here a little bit and call six at a time, and there's plenty of room in the aisle. You can line up uh, as you're called. Patricia Lopez, Guadalupe Valentin, Christine Hung, Abby, Help me out here, Lidistan, is that correct? Sofia Gomez and Stephanie Medina Lopez. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Patricia Lopez y vengo de parte de mi escuela Freedom uh, pidiendo de favor que pues uh, dejen al maestro Morales. Uh, good evening, my name is Patricia Lopez. I am coming from my school, uh, Freedom Elementary, asking to please keep Mr. Morales. El cariño del señor Gerardo Morales a los niños y al personal de nuestra escuela, Freedom, nos gusta como nos trata, nos da respeto y amor, sinceridad y afecto en nuestra familia. Um, the care that Mr. Morales uh, shows to all the kids, staff at our school freedom, we like that. He treats us with respect and love and uh, sincerity. And we like it, that, that affects our family in a positive way. We like that. Muchas gracias y que tenga buenas noches. Thank you very much and you have a good evening. Buenas noches, con todo el respeto. Mi nombre es Guadalupe Valentín. Vengo representando la Escuela Freedom. Good evening, with all my respect. I am here, uh, my name is Guadalupe Valentín and I am here representing my school, Ele Freedom Elementary. Con el respeto que se merecen, necesitamos, la verdad que nos escuchen, el director Gerardo Morales es un buen director 
with all due respect, uh, we need for you to listen to us. Principal Morales, it's a good principle. Hay manera de, de decirles a nuestros estudiantes que el director se nos va y la verdad que hoy en este día yo no sabía cómo decirle a mi hija que este año iba a ser su último del director Morales. There is a certain way to let our kids know when a principal is not going to be there anymore. And today, honestly, I had no idea how to tell my daughter that Mr. Morales was no longer going to be her principal. Al ir por ella a la escuela, la plática con, él, con mi hija fue decirle, hija, el director Morales se nos va, este es su último año. Mi hija contestó, mami, ¿por qué? Today, when I picked up my daughter, our chat going home was, um, Mr. Morales is not going to be your principal next year. And her question to me was, mami, why? Me dice, mami. El director nos ayuda, nos, nos dice, tienen que leer, tienen que hacer las tareas, nos saluda todos los días. Es el, la única persona que llega y nos dice, dame en tu cinco. She tells me, mami, my principal greets us. He, um, he tells us to read. He's the one coming to us to say us, give me high five. Gracias por escucharnos y ojalá y que tomen esto en cuenta que el director Morales se queda. Thank you for listening to me and I hope you take this into consideration that Mr. Morales stays. My name is Christine Hong. I'm the director of um, the Center for Racial Justice at UC Santa Cruz. Many of us have come out here for months speaking to a board that doesn't return our messages, wields power in profoundly undemocratic ways, and holds itself accountable to special interests that donate to their campaigns. You have reproduced a racist hierarchy between those who um, hold decision-making power and those that you are in theory meant to serve. Despite your disregard for us and um, your abuse of authority, it has been so heartening to see students, teachers, parents, community organizers, in a word, the people, tapping into our power potential. You have had a slender chance to do the right thing but we actually don't need your permission. We never have. New knowledge comes from struggle. Clarity about injustice comes from struggle. And deeper Thanks, commitment to the necessity of structural change comes from struggle. As I said, Hi, uh, my name is Abby. This is my first time coming out here to speak in support of the CRE contract and to reinstate it. Uh, I was born here in Watsonville and I can't express enough how important ethnic studies would have been for me if I was their age. And seeing the, all these amazing students struggle for ethnic studies is the next best thing to having ethnic studies. Actually, part of the ethnic studies curriculum is this right here. These students fighting for their education. And you have a responsibility to respond to them. Um, I have nothing much else to say other than that it's really disheartening to see you make all of these students wait, these parents with these elementary age kids wait until past their bedtimes while they have SATs. You heard the reports. They have SATs. They have exams. They have applying to colleges up ahead. And they're here in this room right now. So I would invite you to take a moment to really listen to these students, do your job, and uh, bring back the CRE contract. Good evening, Board of Trustees. My name is Sophia. Uh, I'm appalled I have to be with you guys again. Um, why? Why aren't you listening to us, to your community, to your people? These people back here are the people taking time out of their lives to fight for this cause. Isn't that proof enough that we're worth fighting for? CRE is still not on the agenda, and I don't understand why you're waiting so long. What you said, Acosta, that you'll settle the issue when um, Pedro Quinteras came in, the superintendent, you, we knew that was a nothing statement. You're putting us on hold. You're shoving us into a corner. 
You're pushing homework aside that you'll never end up completing. I hope you know we're not leaving. You're not pushing us away. We'll always be back and we'll always fight. Let it be known you aren't even funding for the CRE contract. A grant is. You'll lose nothing. Absolutely nothing. Bring back CRE. Good evening. I'm here today to express my feelings towards the removal of the CRE contract. I am mad to see people like you try to change something that has made me more aware of my place in this committee and how little we mean to you. You only care for the money you'll be getting while people like us get more and more oppressed by the actions you do. You claim the, CIE, the CRE contract is anti-Semitism, yet you have not done anything to prove it does. You people are the same. The secret of liberty is the enlightenment of men, as that of a tyrant is to try and keep them ignorant. You basically want to wake the next generation of students who take S ethnic studies to be unaware of their heritage and their stories by re not renewing the CRE contract. People like you who take and never, and I mean never, want to see the actions that are negatively reflecting make me sick. I want you to listen to all of us right now, all the students here, and bring CRE contract back now. <laughs> All right, next six, Maximiliano Barraza, Giancarlo Mondo, Itzel Barraza, Marilyn Garrett, Edgar Guerrero, and Gabriel Barraza. Evening board, my name is Maximiliano. You should already know that since this is my sixth time coming here. My message is dedicated towards trustee Acosta, De Serpa, and Soto. I have no words to describe the disappointment I feel coming to speak for the sixth time in a row. I'm running out of things to say. How can you continue to ignore us for so long? I didn't expect this to take so long because I had trust and respect for you. My parents taught me to respect my elders and figures of authority, but I have to say, I cannot respect you, let alone trust you after you have forced the communities to speak out for so long. You're public servants. Your job is to do the people's bidding. All you have to do is listen to the majority of people. Is that so hard? We've had over 30 people show up to these meetings consistently with a climax of over 80 people showing up. What will take you to listen? My disappointment truly is immeasurable and my day is ruined thinking about your disregard for the people's opinion. Acosta, you should really consider listening to the people since you're going to be Thank up you. for election. Anyone Think about the reputation you are giving rise to. Please listen to us. And if you're not going to do your job, then at least be honest. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. My name is John Carlo. Um, this is my second time coming here. And sadly, nothing has really seemed to change. <laughs> I don't really understand why nobody seems to be listening to us. I mean, we've had countless people come here and also express their worries, their concerns, and just how they want the contract back. Uh, to be honest, I'm pretty disappointed about how the contract is being removed once again. And please just listen to us. I mean, just look at all of us here. I mean, we clearly care for our education and we also want this contract back. We are tired of not being heard. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ishan, and this is my sixth time coming here. Yeah, I'm appalled that after six months, you have not brought back CRE. We aren't leaving. We aren't going to stop. President Acosta, we will continue to show up no matter how long you try to drag it out. It is your job to listen to and represent this community. You should feel ashamed that you have to shorten our speaking time because you let it get to this point. Vice President Soto, for you to demand respect while trying to shut down students is disgusting. In elementary school, we learn to treat people how you want to be treated. Clearly, that message didn't get to you. Trustee de Serpa, I'd love for you to show proof of anti-Semitism in the curriculum. Did you not learn that you have to cite your evidence when making an argument? 
As a middle school student, I should not have a better understanding of these lessons than all of you. And as for you, Trustee Flores, as your constituent, I am just disappointed that you haven't done or said anything to address this issue. Clearly, you aren't representing us. You four are stopping students from getting a valuable education because of your unsubstantiated biases. If you don't want to get voted, There you go. Acosta, can you can you look at me, please? Thank you. Wait, bruh. Look at me, please. <laughs> All right, then be like that. Hello again. My name is Edgar, and I am disappointed in you. How many times do people need to remind you that you need to bring back CRE? You've been told this countless times. It is about that. It, it's about time you do your job. Nobody here is going to give up on this. If you truly believe that this is anti-Semitic, you need proof. Prove to us that anything in the curriculum is anti-Semitic. I hope you follow Trustee Holm in researching instead of accusing with no proof. This isn't the Salem Witch Trials. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gabriel Barraza, and I live in Area 5. Uh, first, I want to thank Mr. Murray Sheckman for his service. Uh, we didn't get off to the greatest start when you, we first met, but uh, you realized that you needed to do some research, and you came back and corrected the situation, uh, which is what public servants are supposed to do. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing for some of the members of the board. We have been here for months asking you to bring back the CRE contract, which you arbitrarily decided not to renew. Now, you guys are public servants. You guys are voted in by the people. And yet you are not listening to the people as they come to speak to you. I've told you that you will suffer political consequences, and I will make good on that promise. Thank you. Marilyn Garrett, retired teacher. I have tremors because of working by fields of pesticides at a misty school, and the wireless microwave radiation has similar damage on the neurological system. Your agenda says two minutes for public comment. You're not keeping to your agenda. You had the students sit here for two hours and wasted their time. It's, it's really despicable. The Nuremberg Treaty of World War II was signed by all the nations of the world, and it's very specific treaty. What it says is that no human being will be experimented upon without her or his consent, and before they give consent, they have the legal right to understand all of the implications, the health problems, the future health problems, and they have the legal capacity to say no. That has to do with wireless Wi-Fi technology. It has to do with vaccines that are poisons. It has to do with the pesticides. We need to stop the assault on health and the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. All right, last group, and that's actually seven left. Uh, Miguel Martin Villalobos, Alyssa Rocha Rangel, Desi Salinas Holtz, it Italis Arias, Arias, Bobby Peltz, Lourdes Barasas, and Jacob Chapnick. Miren, no hay fecha que no llegue ni plazo que no se cumpla. Quítense los audífonos porque eso sí va a ser en español. Este mensaje es para ustedes, no es para ellos. Mírenlos de frente. La mayoría ni siquiera han volteado a ver a las personas que se sientan aquí. Señor Adam, ¿está usted con la gente o con el verdugo? Y lo pregunto seriamente. Cuando termine, dígalo en inglés, no hay problema. ¿Los ven? ¿Los ven? 
no les importamos. Esta gente siente desagrado por nosotros. Esta gente es profundamente racista. Muchos de ellos se creen mucho porque hablan inglés. O me equivoco, señor Soto. Muchos de ellos se dan el lujo de no mirarlos a los ojos. Se creen los defensores de la comunidad judía, pero ¿saben qué son? Son los perpetuadores de las injusticias. Las personas como el señor Morales, el contrato CRE, porque vaya que por eso estoy aquí. Es lo que hace que valga la pena Watsonville. Mi nombre es Miguel, esto es Watsonville. Watsonville es nuestro. Venimos a reclamar lo que es nuestro. Y les pedimos la alianza de todos. A la cuenta de tres les pido a todos. Oh, okay, thank you. Hello, board. My name is Alyssa Rexman Hell, and I am a student at Watsonville High School. This is my second time coming here. Having to see my peers fight for the CRE contract since September is really frustrating, especially when none of you guys are paying attention. And the students in the you disregard all of this because of your own bias toward the contract and you say that this contract is anti-Semitic yet you provide no evidence of it being anti-Semitic. This shows that you want to put forward your own opinion instead of the public's voices like you were elected. I would like to also thank my ethnic studies teacher, Mr. Pels, again for continuing to fight for this contract and providing me with the education that has made me the person I am today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna restart. And I urge all of you to rethink your decision on not renewing the CRE contract. I'm upset that this has not yet been put back on the agenda. And it has been months of us advocating and you still refuse to listen. When I first found out about the decision to not renew the contract, I was disgusted and confused why such a thing would happen. First, I wrote an email to the board requesting to bring the CRE contract back on the agenda. Then, the next time, I came to the board meeting not expecting to speak, but then after seeing everyone and the struggle, um, sorry, and the struggle and work they were putting in for my education, I decided to write something up fast and speak shortly on it. And now, I am here for my second time meeting, and this time I am prepared because it has been long enough that we have been ignored and treated like our voices don't matter. My ethnic studies class has changed my point of view on others and has shined a new light on many of my classmates who I once thought did not care enough to be part of their community and stand up for others. But yet, here they are defending their, for their education. Thank you and please reconsider bringing it back on the agenda. Good evening, board. My name is Italis Arias. For months, I've seen my peers come up and tell all of you in many different ways to bring back this year's contract. In my ethnic studies class, I heard a quote that inspired me to come tonight. What's the point of having a voice if you're going to be silent in those moments you shouldn't be? Being in ethnic studies has taught me so many different things about myself and others around me and about my ethnicity. My teacher, Mr. Prowse, has encouraged so many of us to come and try to be heard. But when will you finally listen to us? As the community who voted you in those seats, as the community you're supposed to respond to, please bring back this year's contract. Uh, good evening, Bobby Pell, Watsonville High. Uh, Trustee Soto, at the last board meeting, you said that you're not arbitrarily going to make a decision on the CRE contract. But in September, that's exactly what this board did when it canceled the CRE contract based on the opinions of just two people. You yourself pointed that out when you said that we didn't think we should disrupt a viable program because of an opinion. But in March, as part of the agenda committee, you voted not to bring the, uh, the CRE contract back to the agenda. So not only are we disrupting a viable program, but it's being disrupted by your opinion. And now you say that while you understand our priority, the board had a different priority. Trustee Soto, that's not how this works. You are a public servant. You serve the public. So you don't tell us what the priorities are. We tell you. And we the people, demand that you get your priorities straight because ours could not be more clear. 
we're going to vote you out in November. Thank you. I just want to ask that you all sit up, open your ears, and open your hearts. I demand that you all can reconsider the removal of Mr. Morales from Freedom Elementary. He is an outstanding person on an educational level, as well as a personal level. He encourages not only students, but parents as well, to keep on getting involved and being a great example in our community. Please do not take out such a wonderful person that now leads Freedom Elementary. He is achieving great standards, and even though my youngest will be moving out to middle school next year, I do not want other younger students to miss out on the chance of having an exceptional leader as, as an introduction to their education. To everyone in the audience, always stick up for what you believe in and always double check who you vote for. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jacob Chapnick. I worked as a speech language pathologist for three years in this district. And I'm here to speak tonight about my best friend and colleague, Ms. D. Gonzalez. Some of you may have seen the pictures. They're right here by the front. I would encourage you to take a look on your way out. I've seen some things over my time in this district that have certainly given me pause, but of the most shocking is someone who came out of retirement, got two separate credentials to teach special ed, broke both her legs, and still wanted to come back and teach. And now the CELPA wants to close her program. All of her students are sitting right here, way past their bedtime, because they're here to support her. <laughs> EA Hall has one of the most inclusive life skills programs in the district. Don't shut it down. My name is Dr. Barraza. As everybody else here, I've been here numerous times. And I keep hearing, we, 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 are, um, we respect you, we respect you. It's not just the words, it's the actions. You haven't shown any actions that show you respect us. You don't return emails, you don't return phone calls. And when we're speaking here, uh, you know, Acosta, I've seen you in most of the meeting, just not even bothering to look at the people who have taken the time to come here. And you know, I, I wanted to thank um, Trustee Dodge for actually saying that our time mattered but apparently not to you. I guess we have to be paid consultants in order for our time to matter. Because it's almost 10 o'clock and you made the students stay up this late just so that you can make them suffer through something they didn't choose. They don't need to listen to Kinder Roundup. That could have waited. But you chose instead to make them waste their time. And to Serpa, I'm sorry, but you know what? You're exactly the kind of person that um, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King warned us about, the well-meaning progressive, who instead of serving the public, you're serving your own personal interest. And that's what you guys are all doing. But we'll vote you out. Thank you all for who joined us this evening. Now we will move to um, employee organization comments. Now is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. We will start with 8.1, Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Do we have anyone here from PVFT? I can tell it. Roddy, will you give us a few minutes and we'll call on you, okay? Thank you.
board is going to take a three minute recess and then we will move on to item 8.1. Thank you. Trustees, Interim Superintendent Checkman. So, um, as you all know, I'm Roddy Kirkman. I am the Chief Negotiator for the Pajaro Federation, Valley Federation of Teachers. Um, and I'd just like to start off by thanking Mr. Checkman for your service to the district over these past uh, 10 months, I believe. Um, 
The PVFT is excited and heart have already begun collaborating with Dr. Contreras as she begins her tenure in PVUSD. So uh, one of the things we're hoping to collaborate with Dr. Contreras on is bringing back the CRE contract that this board has terminated without cause and that this board continues to keep off the agenda, failing their community and their constituents. There are also another a number of other items on your agenda that I would like to speak to tonight. You have two MOUs that were negotiated with the district that I would like to speak to. The first MOU is addressing our Migrant Seasonal Head Start Program and our Buena Vista Children's Center. These programs serve our migrant families and they run seasonally. Um, typically they run from May and their contracts that they receive each year state that they run through October. However, every year that I have been in this position, every season, um, a majority of those teachers actually work into mid-November or towards the end of November. By claiming that the season ends in October, the district is able to terminate their health benefits for that month while these employees continue to provide this invaluable service to the migrant and seasonal families of the district. That is a disservice. These employees also, just like numerous bus drivers in our district, are required to work split shifts. I don't think I need to explain what hardship a split shift is on an employee. They deserve better. The second MOU that you're gonna see tonight is to address a practice that has been happening at one of our middle school sites. At this site, the teaching periods are 51 minutes. When these teachers sub during their teaching periods on their prep, they are being paid a proportion of an hour. That is adding insult to injury. Interestingly enough, the former assistant superintendent of HR, who is now working at this site, chose not to correct this when she began. So we are here presenting an MOU to correct this practice that has been going on at this site all year. Um, I do want to acknowledge, I'm looking at the time here, you have numerous resolutions on the agenda tonight. Um, we are always happy and representing the amazing educators as well as school nurses in this district and in support of recognizing them whenever we can. I'm also excited to see the number of murals on the agenda and all of the student involvement regarding those mural murals being done. Very exciting. Finally, on your consent agenda tonight, you are approving a contract with Linda Mood Bell to provide one-on-one -on -one services for one student in our district, totaling $18,400. I am struggling to justify this in my mind. Today I met with an adaptive physical education teacher who travels to seven different school sites a week to see the students on her caseload and provide adaptive physical education to them. We heard from public speakers about the life skills program being disassembled at EA Hall, creating a disservice to families in that area whose students have those needs. What you really need to be doing instead of entering into ridiculous contracts is you need to be looking at how we are looking at caseloads, the work that our special education professionals are being asked to do, and stop all of the waste in that program. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirkman. Moving on to item 8.2, CSCA, California School Employees Association. Do we have anyone here from CSCA this evening? No. Uh, moving on to Pajaro Valley Association of Managers, Pavam. Do we have anyone from Pavam this evening? Good evening, President Acosta, uh, Interim Superintendent Sheckman, and Cabinet and Trustees. 
I'm Peggy Pugh, Executive Director for Teaching and Learning for PVUSD, and with me tonight is my colleague. Hi, I'm Jen Bruno. And we want to start tonight by saying on behalf of administra administrators in PVUSD, Mr. Sheckman, we thank you for your service this school year. We're grateful for your leadership and your willingness to step up and lead with us. We also thank you for your many years of service over many, many uh, different school sites in PVUSD for a long time, so we're grateful for you. So thank you so much for your, your leadership. Also, we are so excited to welcome our new superintendent, Dr. Contreras, to our beautiful district that we love with all of our hearts. Our amazing students, talented staff, dedicated administration, and such supportive families are ready to continue the great work with her. So we're ready and ready to welcome her. And our district staff members, administrators, and our site level administrators are in a very special time of the year. We are wrapping up many activities and celebrations at our school sites. We're preparing for summer school and we're getting ready for next school year. So there's so many things happening across the board, both in preparation for our celebrations, our summer, and for a, our 24-25 school year. Administrators and management are busy, and we are thankful for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. Moving on to 8.4, Communication Workers of America, CWA. Do we have anyone from CWA here this evening? Good evening, welcome. Thank you, good evening, board. and. Um, Interim Superintendent Sheckman, it's been nice seeing you and working with you these last six, seven months that I've been coming to these things. Um, I was all kind of pumped up tonight to come talk about our Sunshine Letter, our new negotiation contract that we're putting together, we're assembling and organizing. And we submitted it on April 11th, which was 13 days ago. And then I got here and it's not on the agenda anywhere. 2.4 in the closed session, you guys talked about PVFTs negotiation progress and CSEA's negotiation prog uh, progress. There's three unions to deal with, not two. We are in receivership. You met Nancy last time. She's not an educator. She's a professional union labor movement person with four decades of experience. We have a different dynamic than you guys, than the other unions do. And to be ignored, I thought two weeks in advance, we'd get into the next board meeting. Are you gonna hold us because we turned it in the next morning rather than late at night on the 10th? That seems pretty chintzy to me and it seems a bit unfair. Nowhere on the agenda tonight is CWA's sunshine letter. We worked hard on that. I've been working hard on that. I've been working since 7.30 this morning doing LPAC testing. I did initial tests at Radcliffe. I got two I'm autistic kids that wouldn't test with any other tester to test with me because I joined their group. I made them feel safe. I have an understanding of autistic kids. I've done a lot of special ed assignments. I've done over 3,000 sub days in my 20 years. I'm a valued employee in this district. I'm a certificated teacher and I'm being ignored. We're being ignored as a group of People. There's about 30 to 40 people with similar statuses to mine. We're not PVFT contracted teachers, yet we're being treated like second-rate citizens, especially when it comes to pay. So this new contract is all about wage increases for the subs, for long-term subbing. I was going to get into that more, but I'll wait till next time when it's actually on the agenda. But Nancy sent all of you a copy or an email yesterday about the meat and bones of our contract. The Sunshine Letter was received by Mr. Saxton over there. He acknowledged it in emails. I was CC'd in the email. Um, I'm just confused. I wanna know why we're not on the agenda tonight. Why? It's ridiculous. And for the virtual world watching this and the subs that are watching this, this is how we're being treated by HR. This is gonna be the struggle that we're facing when we wanna get what we need. And then seeing tonight that the microphone was turned off on a teacher and like three different students. Isn't that who the board's supposed to represent? Yet one of you, someone running for office, microphone wasn't shut off. 
So that showed me so much. That little thing right there showed me so much about what we're facing. I hope it's not going to be like your, the CRE contract because the subs are important. We're teachers. And when we show up to sites, we're called heroes. And I know personally that I treat my sub day when I do sub. I do LPEC testing mainly right now. But there are 60 days that I sub, and I have subbed 60 days. I subbed every single day that I could sub this year, and every other day I've done LPAC testing. I'm a valuable employee, irreplaceable. Talk to any of my directors. So I'm blowing uh, my, my own horn a little bit because I deserve that acknowledgement. But man, I really don't understand how if we get a summer school job, I've worked 16 summer schools. 16 summer schools in the 20 years I've worked. Most of them extended learning, one fitness for life, which is a branch of extended learning. Now it's expanded. And I have nothing but respect for Ms. Bruno back there. We're kind of friends. But if a PBFT person gets a summer school job, they get $525 a day. And then if I get a job working in the same grade right next door, I get 240. You standardize the pay to the long-term sub rate, which is way too low, by the way. And if I divide that by seven and a half hours, that's $32 an hour. That's $3 less than the $35 an hour after school rate. It's unreasonable, and it needs to change, and that's what our new contract is going to be all about. And you'll hear more about that from me next time. Five minutes on the nose. Thank you. We'll now move to item 9.1, the Aptos Sports Foundation Youth Recreation Agreement. This um, report will be presented by our Director of Purchasing, Mr. Ariano, and Mr. McFadden with the Aptos Sports Foundation. All right, good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Sheckman. Um, I'm proud to present the board, uh, the, board the Youth uh, Recreation Agreement with the Aptos Sports Foundation, and also say it's, it's always a great day to be a Mariner. Uh, the agreement for your approval will formalize and memorialize the framework for future project de development at Aptos Area Schools. The agreement was developed in collaboration with the foundation, and I'm pleased to be joined for this item by a familiar face and representative of the foundation. And I'm going to turn the podium over to him so he can introduce himself and share the purpose and function of this agreement with the uh, Aptos Sports Foundation. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, it's uh, nice to be back to you uh, in front of you again. Uh, my name is Brett McFadden, and this evening, um, the capacity I'll be in is as a, as a member of the board of uh, directors for the Aptos Sports Foundation, as well as a parent of two former um, students at Aptos High who are now young men and, and doing very well in large part due to their experience and opportunities that they received at Aptos High and, and the opportunities they received in this district. I want to say thank you to the staff, to Rich, uh, Interim Superintendent uh, Sheckman, and to other staff that helped in uh, the formulation of this agreement, the draft that's before you this, this evening. In the interest of time, you'll drive? All right, wonderful. Good. Great. I don't, I'm not in a condition to drive, so that's wonderful. So, um, all right. So what we're going to cover this evening real quick, we'll, we'll make sure that we're um, moving quickly through this. As we'll give you a little bit of background about the foundation. We'll talk about how we support PVUSD and Aptos area schools. We'll talk about our partnership that we've uh, worked with the Watsonville as well as the Pajaro Valley Sports Foundations and how we work in concert with them. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the agreement that's before you. There's a number of speakers that are here tonight, and following me will be our president um, and the founder of the foundation, uh, Mr. Paul Bailey. So if you could please, thank you, sir, very much. So I don't have to say uh, this uh, uh, too much, but the role of athletics uh, in education. Great schools, whether they're elementary, middle schools, or high schools, have great athletic programs, as well as visual and performing arts. They're part of what makes a great school and what makes a culture, and the data is clearer than that. If you could move on, please. Thank you. So the Aptos Sports Foundation, we have actually been around for 45 years, and we are a nonprofit local foundation, 501c3 uh, program with one single purpose. We support Aptos area schools in their athletic programs. Specifically, we dedicate our time, effort, and funding and the fundraising that we do in order to improve athletic facilities 
in the six Aptos area schools. We have countless hours of in-kind support. Over the last few years, we've raised more than $6 million of direct funding support. But when you count our in-kind support, as well as uh, indirect donations that we receive from other large donors or from members of the community, we believe that uh, overall contribution that we've uh, been able to bring in over the past 10, 10 years is $15 million plus in the overall services and programs, as well as uh, facility enhancements. We also provide financial and administrative support services to 15 Aptos High School teams in terms of their booster funding the funding that re they receive in the, from the uh, community, we help to administer that on their behalf um, through our process with that. We are 100% volunteer driven. Every single dollar that we raise goes back into our projects and, and services for the Aptos uh, area schools. And I'm proud to say we are former students, we're former and current parents, community members, and leaders. Our, our president and founder of the, of the uh, foundation was one of the first graduates of Aptas High um, and uh, started this because of his dedication for the community and it's an honor to work with him with that. If you could do the next slide, please. This is our mission statement, but I basically won't read it to you, but we have one singular purpose. We are focused on students and making sure that they have the opportunities through our athletic programs and the facilities to be able to do that. We are a partner to the district and that is our, our primary purpose in that process. This is some of our accomplishments. This is just a partial list of our accomplishments, but we have done projects as large as the stadium and Aptos High School. Most recently, we uh, helped to oversee and, and provide services and pay for the painting of the Aptos High Junior High, Junior Aptos Junior High Gym, which had never been painted before. Um, and so we were able to do that and raise the funds uh, from the community to do that. If we can go to the next slide. We also actively work with in cooperation with both the Watsonville and the Pajaro Valley Foundations. We have provided assistance in, or, in order to get them started and get going, and we work cooperatively. We're pr actually proud to say that the Watsonville Sports Foundation actually raised more money than us um, uh, in the past uh, two years overall, primarily with some uh, large d uh, donors. And so now, um, after years of them um, um, mirroring what uh, they're doing, we're now mirroring what, what uh, uh, what they're a part of, of that. So we work cooperatively with both of the foundations and in support of them. Next slide, please. Why this agreement and why we're before you this, this evening? What we typically do in our projects is a project by project approach and we come to board, me board meetings uh, with a particular type of agreement. What we're looking for right now is to establish an ongoing partnership with the district in terms of it will provide a streamlined approach so that each once per year will come before the district and, and staff and designate what projects and, and priorities we will work cooperatively with the board as opposed to coming to board particular board meetings with particular agreements for project specific uh, items. This will be able to streamline our approach in addition, we're talking to a number of large-scale donors um, in the area, and what they, common, what they commonly ask us is, is, do you have an agreement with the district? And this will provide that. The one thing that this agreement also does is, and we're proud to say this, is we will continue to maintain compliance with all your district board policies, compliance with federal state regulations. We have extreme experience. A number of us are also educators in other districts in the area. And we have experience with the DSA process and such. And so that the board, as well as the district, will continue to maintain authority over its facilities and over its programs and policies. And we are proud to say that we have always adhered to that and we will continue to do that. And that is specifically enumerated in the agreement. That's our presentation for this evening. We're very uh, proud of the work we've done. Again, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, some speakers on this, and then we'll be ready, uh, stand ready for any questions you may have. Do we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have three, uh, Travis Fox, Paul Bailey, and Gina Castaneda. Good evening. Um, Madam Chair, Board of Trustees, um, Superintendent Sheckman. Thank you for the opportunity to do this. My name is Paul Bailey, live out in Aptos. And after what Brett just said, I don't know that uh, I, can, oh, I can do better, but I'm gonna take a shot at it. 55 years ago in 1969, I walked onto a new Aptos campus for my first day as a senior and I graduated in the class of 70. 
Aptos High School is a new unfinished campus. No lights, no fencing around the football field, no lights on the football field, grass was sprayed on, no curbs, crushed granite track, small set of stands, no pool, no tennis court, no baseball field. The first baseball field was bladed in um, and sprinkled with grass, and sprink sprinkled with water and seeded for grass by the Glom Egg family on a series of weekends. This began a tradition of the community stepping up to help Aptos High School. In 1998, we scraped, the Sports Foundation scraped that field, and as an example of what we like to do, built that current field for $38,000. And it should have been about $350,000, but we got the rest donated, and that's our stick. Um, Sports Foundation created in 1979 for the purpose of improving, do I stop now? I can walk away. We're at time. Thank you. Pardon? Thank you. 815 students at Aptos High School play sports out of, out of 1,350 kids. That is phenomenal. That's 60% of the kids play sports. Good evening. It's way past my bedtime. President Acosta, Board of Trustees, thank you, Murray, for all that you've done for the community. My name is Gina Castaneda. I'm the Aptos High School girls soccer coach. This is my third year, two league championships. I'm also a U.S state coach for the OD Olympic Development Program, and I just got selected to be the United States West Region soccer coach for out of 15 states. So we'll be traveling to Utah. I'm a community coach. Uh, my girls team, local team, just won the state championship. We'll be traveling to Hawaii in um, June. Um, but I'm here to talk to, about myself as a student. Um, I went to Valencia, Aptos Junior and Aptos High School. I was plagued in my family. I grew up in a gang family, um, domestic violence, um, living in a gang culture. Um, there's six of us, five of us were system involved. Um, I suffered neglect, physical abuse, and emotional abuse. Um, I didn't start believing in myself until I joined the sports team. And this was at Aptos High School. It was coaches and teachers that believed in me and um, I and helped me be successful. I played volleyball, soccer, and track and field. I could not afford any of my uniforms. And if it wasn't for coaches that actually bought the stuff for me out of their own pockets, I would not have been successful. Um, when I took the position of Aptos High School soccer coach, I was criticized by the Watsonville community. How could Gina, how could you go to Aptos? But I had to explain to them that I was a Mexican kid that went to Aptos and had nobody that looked like me or anybody that I could look up to. I wanna be that person for the Aptos community because I have many little girls, Mexican soccer players from the Watsonville community that need somebody that talks to them, that understands and looks like them. Um, as a coach, I need to have a safe environment to lead my team, to lead individuals, to for provide a safe space where children can thrive as people, athletes, and coaches shouldn't have to stress about um, facilities. Um, I have a son that's graduating from San Jose State that coaches at Aptos. I have a daughter that plays at CSUMB that coaches at Aptos. It's as important to them to be role models in this community as, as it is important to me. Thank, Thank you, you, Gina. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Travis Fox. I'm the athletic director at Aptos High School. This is my fifth year at Aptos High School, and I just wanted to be here tonight to show support for both the district and the Sports Foundation. Um, thank you all for the support. I mean, I truly feel that this district supports interscholastic athletics. Um, and, you know, we've been working a lot with as a, as a, the three high schools together over this year. Um, I'd come to more of these board meetings, but the blessing and the curse of my job is there's always a game going on. Um, but yeah, you know, as we as we face, as we've talked about declining enrollment, um, aging facilities, you know, and we got a group of people who, as their hobby, would like to give back to the kids. Um, I think it'd be it'd be a really cool opportunity just to kind of set this in stone for the future um, of all the kids and. I made notes, but I was trying to be quick. Um, just thank you all. Thank you all um, for everything. Yeah, thank you. We, we consider ourselves the last class of the day at Aptos High School. So thank you. Thank you. Is that the last? All right. I will bring it back to the board for comments and discussion. Trustee Dr. Holm. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. McFadden, I think the questions. Well, well, Richard, maybe both of you. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Stay with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very familiar with the projects at you know, Aptos High School and, and Aptos Junior High, and like particularly the, the, the gym at Aptos Junior High. The, the painting job is, is beautiful. I got to see that, and it was, it was like my, my older two kids went to Aptos Junior High before the paint. Actually, all three of my kids went before the paint. So it's like, ooh, that's Big a difference. nice. difference. Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the projects you're planning or are considering for the elementary sites? Because I'm not as familiar with those projects. Yeah, unfortunately, at this point in time, um, we don't have anything in the sort of in the hopper about that. We've begun discussions. Our, our um, emphasis and our time has been with Aptos High School. That's why we then moved to, in the past two years, to Aptos Junior High with the intent to, to uh, broaden into the elementary schools. So if there are ideas um, either coming from the sites or from the board, um, we're open to that um, at this point in time. But we don't have a current project with this, but we're exploring that actively. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to quickly say thank you to the Aptos Sports Foundation. Uh, I remember, I didn't know Gina Casanina personally, but I remember uh, they needed help working at the field at Freedom Elementary. And she, she reached out to me and said, hey, we, you know, I'm working with this group, this organization, Mr. Billy and a couple others who help behind the scenes. You know, uh, we have this money, where we need more fields, and we still have this issue today where we need more fields. But not only did they raise the money, they went out there on the, on the weekends, you know, they got the shovels, you know, people in the community um, brought tractors, you know, there was just all volunteers dug up the pipes, put in the grass, and so it, it's not just about raising money, but it's volunteering. And I know there's others behind the scenes, like I said, um, you know, Coach Gregorio is also doing well fundraising, trying to catch up, you know. But, um, I, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you, Gina, uh, for not really talking about it and doing doing the work. And thank you to the, the, the Sports Foundation and to others out there um, who are raising money, but also putting in the work, picking up a shovel um, and tearing up grass. And so, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Anyone else? Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Thanks for this great presentation tonight, and thank you to Paul Bailey, um, who's the founder of the Aptos Sports Foundation. We really appreciate um, your heart and soul being put into this work. Um, Aptos High happens to have the number, I think, Travis, you can correct me, the number one largest athletic program in the whole county, bigger than UCSC, bigger than Cabrillo College. The biggest program is at Aptos High. And what that means is that kids have the opportunity to work collaboratively, learn teamwork, work their bodies out, develop skills that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. Um, I wanna thank Travis for your good work at the school. Um, we're really happy and proud that you're there. And to Gina, thank you for coming tonight past your bedtime. We're so um, proud of your accomplishments and feel so grateful that you chose Aptos High. Um, to work at. Thank you for being such a wonderful role model to all kids, but especially to our girls there. Yeah. And Brett, it's really nice to see you again thank at you. the podium. Uh, yeah, it's we, nice to be we here miss in this you. Capacity. Thank you. And thanks to Rich for making it all happen. We really appreciate the collaboration with the Aptos Sports Foundation. Thank you. Thank and, you. And by the way, I won the poker tournament this year. You certainly did. The to, whole thing. To much, much to our surprise. Yes, you did. For not knowing how to play poker. So, um, on that. Madam Chair, if I, if I may, um, to uh, Trustee DeSerpa's uh, comment on this, as, as, as an educator myself, um, athletics is not about sports. It's about teaching and learning. Um, it is an extension of the instructional program and what sports um, uh, teaches us, as well as visual and performing arts and, and other student activities teaches us how to be a team player, how it teaches us how to lose and how to lose gracefully and to learn from our losses on that. So um, uh, if you want to find a great school, particularly a great high school, you'll have a vibrant student activities, vibrant intervention programs, and vibrant athletic programs. And that's what we're all about. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Um, Vice President Soto, did you have something you wanted to say? I'm just going to make a quick comment. Sure. Brett, good to see you. It's nice to see while. you, sir. Uh, yeah, getting back to the uh, 
team spirit aspect of the sports. You know, it's good, you know, like to hear Gina's story coming from where she came from to where she's at now. You know, sports is an out for, for a lot of kids, and it's a good out. Uh, you know, I involved my kids in sports as they were coming up playing softball and football and baseball and different things. And they didn't stick with it, but they learned a few things, like you said. So uh, it's good to see that you're also involving our local schools as well with Watsonville and PV and collaborating with them to get them involved as well. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Okay. Any further deliberation? I'd Comments? Like I'd like to make a motion if we need one. Thank you. I have a motion from Trustee Dr. Holm, a second from Trustee Bolano Scow. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The vote carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 9.2, the new mural Piscando in Pajaro at Watsonville High School. This report will be presented by our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Ms. Aguirre, and Ms. Huerta. Good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. This evening, um, I have the honor of introducing student Jennifer Gonzalez Huerta, who uh, created a beautiful mural. Um, it's a commemorative mural for artist Juan Fuentes. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over. And if we can put up the picture, uh, not the location, there'll be one with the one more. There we go. So good evening, board, board of Trustees. My name is Jennifer Gonzalez Huerta, and my pronouns are ella, she. I'm a senior at Watsonville High School, and this evening we are here to discuss the commemorative mural propo proposal for Juan Fuentes. In collaboration with Expanding Learning, co-founder of Watsonville Film Festival, Consuelo Alba, teachers, counselors, and students of PBUSD, we want to honor the hard work of Juan Fuentes, who graduated from Watsonville High School in 1969. Art Hills. Fuentes grew up in Watsonville and graduated from Watsonville High School. It will be an honor to showcase his artwork in our high school. He's a local artist with a broad vision of success. Becoming an artist for Fuentes was a dream because he was primarily exposed to working in the fields. Picking a strawberry seems like his destiny. He didn't got, get much encouragement when he discovered his sensitivity into art. He needed it to raise his voice about the injustice and realities of his community. A local filmmaker named Eugenia created a film named a Strawberry Picker. When I watched the film, I felt inspired. Hasa C. Fuentes has a possible, positive role model who overcame adversity and now he's a famous artist. With the help of Ms. Webb, one of the art teachers at Watsonville High School, a, a group of students and I started to paint back in August. But, but this is now all a representation of our dreams, like forming artists. Please realize that representation matters. I'm a proud daughter of a farm worker, a newcomer student, I'm a raising artist, and kindly ask you to join us in recognizing the hard work of farm workers in our community with this mural. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Hello, my name is uh, Maribel, and I am I'm, a first generation. I'm sorry, hold on. Ms. Gary, are we still in the midst of a presentation, or is this public comment? Okay. Yeah, okay, we'll continue. Hello, my name is Maribel. I am first generation from both sides of my family and the daughter of farm workers that have worked here in Watsonville over 15 years in the fields. I would have loved to see more representation of hardworking agriculture workers since it's not that easy working in the fields and which I have experienced it myself. And having people come to this country, leaving everything behind is a big challenge. And that's what some workers had to go through which wasn't easy and very inspiring how they were able to do that as I stay. I would love to see more morals like this in my community, which people can look up to. Are we good, Ms. Gary? Okay, thank you. All right, do we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have two, uh, Bobby Peltz and Karina Moreno. Okay. 
Um, I just uh, have one thing to say. Um, Jenny, I am really, really proud of you. Uh, from when I first met you as a sophomore in my class to the young woman that you've become today, I'm so impressed. And you conceived of this idea, you put the work in, and you got it done. And now we're going to have this mural in our campus. And when I cross campus, I'm going to see it, and I'm going to smile, and I'm going to think of you, and I'm going to be inspired. So thank you for your gift. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you to Sarah Webb uh, for supporting these kids and, making, and, and helping to make this project a reality. Thank you. Hi, buenas noches. I also just want to say, Jenny, felicidades. Felicidades por venir y, y hablar, ¿no? Pero también, she's very humble. She's actually, también es una activista, artista, muralist. Um, and she creates a home for people. She, she's very good at reaching out and creating space for people through her art and telling other people's stories just like her own through her art and being able to, she's graduating high school this year with so many accolades, a seal in civic engagement um, and a lot of scholarships, very well deserved and I'm super proud of you. Um, and so I hope you'll support this and también thank you you know, Mrs. Webb, for, for putting this together. And I've had the honor of being in your class, and you create a space and a home for all of your students. So thank you guys for coming out and speaking today. I'm very excited to support your, your mural. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to take a pause here, and I would like to um, call a point of order, and I'd be willing to entertain a motion to extend the board's meeting. Make a motion to extend until midnight. And you think that will be enough time? No. One, I'll make a motion to extend until 1 a.m. Thank you. I have a motion to extend the board's meeting until 1 a.m. May I have a second? I'll second. I've got a first, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. And now we will bring it back to item 9.2 two for discussion from the board. Oh, and I, so, yeah. Sorry, Danny. Uh, you know, Trustee Dodge Jr., please. I'd just like to say, you know, con congratulations. Uh, this is important mural from the people from our past, you know, the, the the different gener you know different generations of different types of people who worked in the fields but this mural hopefully lasts you know 40 50 years cuz murals are important you know someone who's participated with Yermo Aranda it's it's an inspiration and so uh, i'd also like to thank your your teacher uh, Sarah Webb she emailed me march 4th I, I you know she wanted to know the process and i really wasn't sure She's like, you know, she, she told me that you had this mural, you know, this is your vision. And so thank you, Mrs. Webb. And I know I had to, you know, somehow get in touch with Lisa and, and, and Coach Gregorio. But um, congratulations. And, you know, my daughter's in Watsonville High myself. And um, it's something to be proud of, you know, something that's part of Watsonville High. It's something we hope lasts forever. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Anyone else? Trustee Flores? I'm sorry. I just want to say congratulations also to all of you ladies. Um, this mural is amazing. I can see your your heart, your passion, and your talent. And I, just, I can't wait to see it up on campus. But thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Dr. Holm? You know, we learned a, a hard lesson about the importance of murals when the one in the Watsonville High cafeteria uh, was painted over. And, you know, I think what that highlighted is just how much of an important part of the community these pieces of art are. And, you know, when I saw this picture, it's just, it's, it's so evocative of, you know, this community. And um, it's just heartening to, to see you know, people, you know, bringing the community into our community schools. So thank you for all the work that went into making this happen. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm, Trustee Bolano-Scow, and then Trustee DeSerpa. 
Yes, thank you, and to thank you to the, the Watsonville High community. I got a nice letter from uh, Councillor Daisy Nunez today, and from Consuelo Alba in support of this, and um, and to Eugenia for making the film. Uh, I know several of us are, are are descendants of farm workers here in the Pajaro Valley, uh, as my grandfather was as well, and um, and it's not and the pro and there are still many problems with the labor and the the pesticide exposure. It's gotten better, but there's still many problems. And so um, acknowledging the work uh, or so many of our, our ancestors are doing and the need to improve it is very important. So thank you for bringing this. Thank you for your work. Thank you to your teachers as well. So I look forward to supporting it. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scout. Trustee DeSerpa. I'm gonna keep it short because I want you guys to go home and go to bed. But that's, it's really, really special. And we're very proud of you. Thank you for creating it. And I hope you do other big things in your life with art. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Vice President Soto. Yeah, I just want to congratulate you and uh, I'm proud of you ladies and what you've come up with and what you've done. Um, you know, I, I could see just by looking at this that, you know, you, you got a lot going up in that head of yours and you're very, very, very detailed and intelligent. So don't lose that. That's, that's a gift from God. So Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, I'm going to agree. I'm going to keep it short and sweet so you could go home and get some rest. Um, beautiful. I, and uh, it's a, just an amazing piece of work. And I think it speaks a testament to your talent. And I do hope that that sticks with you and carries throughout your life. So congratulations. And thank you for bringing this to us. So. I believe I need a motion. I'd like to make a motion we support this agenda item. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. I have a first, I have a from Trustee Dodge Jr. I have a second from Trustee Bolano Scow. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion carries 7-0. Congratulations again. I will now move us to item 9.3, the proposed murals at Aptos High School. This report will be presented again by our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Ms. Gary, and Dr. Hanks Sloan, our principal from Aptos High. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, uh, once again, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. I am going to, um, once again, it's a, it's a mural at Aptos High and a, a very exciting project, and so I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. Allison Hank Sloan to go through the presentation. And a thank you again, Mr. Sheckman, and congratulations, Watsonville, beautiful mural. Um, at Aptos High School, when you walk around our campus, it is full of lots of art. Much of that art, if not all of that art, has been created by our AP art classes. It's kind of slowed down with the COVID world, and we are ready to pick that back up in conjunction with our ASB who had said, we have issues in our bathrooms and we want to create positive spaces in our bathrooms. And being Mariners, we have our ocean themes that we love. And so we can go to that next slide here. We are proposing um, to create art in 10 bathrooms, and we would be working in partnership with the Made Fresh crew, which is based in this community and is a approved vendor, and they would be working with our AP art students to basically decorate the outside of stalls and to create a place that um, brings art into everywhere we go and every space we go, especially some of our daily visits. And so that being said, um, they would be creating ocean themed art and working with the students to make this happen. And we have for you three quick examples. Well, whoops, first of all, cost. The cost would be, um, thank you, next slide. Perfect, thank you, oh, go back one, sorry. Um, would be using our um, Prop 28 funding. And so you can see the cost of materials and then the cost for the artist time who also is training and working with our students. And so empowering our students in how to do this work and doing 10 big projects almost at the same time and making this happen in a miraculous way. So you can come to our campus in a week and a half if we have your approval here. And this is what some of the work these artists have done. If you can take a quick look to get a sense of what it will look like on our campus. It won't be this exact one, so we'll do a quick three things. I'll get you sit down and be out of your hair in just a second. Thank you. So just some examples. And a big shout out to, as you're looking at the art, you can take a look at the next one. Miss Veronique Marks, who is the... Um, lead teacher of our AP Art is here tonight too. And so thank you. 
um, as she has helped motivate and inspire the students who are driving this project. So any questions? Thank you, Dr. Sloan. Any yeah. public comments on this? We have none. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. This is awesome. I'd like to make a motion to support. Thank you, Eva First. Any other comments, discussion, deliberation? I'll second, but I also want to comment that, um, you know, one of the things, that the first time I walked on the Aptos High campus, like this was, gosh, my, my oldest graduated in 2016, so it's been a while since I first walked on the campus. But, you know, I, like the murals that are on the stairways, you know, there, there's, there's murals in kind of unexpected places, but, that the, that one the, the whale one on the on the stairs I remember just being kind of going oh you know and my my kid at the time you know he was all excited about it. he was like oh that's really cool it's like so a mural in a bathroom is I mean at first when I first read the art I was like huh but then I was mm -hmm. like huh <laughs> agree and, and I, I I love the idea of bringing art everywhere you go. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Bolano scow I don't know if you need a second or a third, but I'll give you either one. Um, thank you for waiting this out and being here and, and supporting this art and this beautiful at your campus. This is gorgeous. Uh, I know we don't have a, a mural for PV High tonight, and uh, I know, and uh, but that's not your concern, but that's, we'll work on that. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pilano scale Trustee Flores? I just wanna say that I, I think there, it's beautiful what your proposal is, and it's intriguing this idea of, you know, make, beautifying the bathrooms because we do have this problem across several of our campuses of the um, vandaliz vandalizing bathrooms. Um, and so, yeah, I'm curious to see if this is going to help and work, and you know, hopefully, we can take this across several of our campuses, um, and hope that that can help give t give our students some pride in you know all of their campus, you know, bathrooms and locker rooms everywhere. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I think that might be a good to have you come back and report back to us and let us know how it is going. I'd be honored. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I do have a first and second, if, unless there's any other discussion or deliberation for the board. I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstaining? That carries 7-0. Thank you. We look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you. Moving on to item 9.4, approval of the McQuitty Elementary School mural redesign and repainting proposal. And this report will be presented by our Director of Maintenance Operations and Facilities, Mr. Fernandez. Welcome. Good evening, President Acosta, Inter Superintendent Sheckman, Board of Trustees, Cabinet. My name is Arlindo Fernandez, and I'm here to present these um, mural replacement project for McQuitty Elementary School. So as you can see, this is the current mural that was built in, painted in 2008 by Elijah Funhauer. Next slide. So in this slide, the school site wants to replace, to keep up with the changes with PBIS and HERD models, the school would like to align the mural to match that. Next slide. This is what the artist is going to do to prepare for the mural. Next slide. So step three shows the complete pro project cost. As you can see here, the cost, the, the school will not pay any, anything for this mural. They got a grant from um, Santa Cruz Foundation for $2,000 and Expanded Learning is covering the rest of the $5,400. So as you can see, this is the new proposed mural that 
they want to replace in that wall. So I'm asking for your approval of this mural so we could continue with this project. The project completion day would be May 30th, 2024, if this gets approved today. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this item? We do not. All right. I'm going to bring it back to the board, but I'm going to be the first one to make um, a comment on this. As I um, toured this school with our interim superintendent and the principal of McQuitty, and we saw the firsthand the need and had a little bit of a discussion around the topic. And um, did you want to add any comments, interim superintendent, Mr. Sheckman, on um, the feedback we had from our principal during that visit? No, just uh, that, thanks. Just to the, what I got to see before input. and what we're seeing tonight is absolutely stunning. And our student input on the mural. We, she spoke to us about the student yeah. input that it, we had. This that. was a school-wide effort. Mm -hmm. Some parents were involved. The main artist from before was involved. It was just really well done. And it's quite spectacular to look at. And as I told the folks at McQuitty, because it's a flat street in front, I'll be out in front on my bicycle. And now that I know on May 30th it'll be done, I'll stop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and look at it. <laughs> thank you, President thank, Acosta, for the Thank you. Um, so with that, I'm going to make a motion to approve this item. And I'm going to bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation, or a second. Trustee Milano Scow. A, a second, and I, I love McQuitty Elementary as well. So thank you for your work on this and to the entire school and all the great teachers and kids and parents and principal there. I have a first and second. Any other deliberation or discussion? Trustee DeSerpa? I have one question. Who's the artist on this? I didn't see that. Elijah. So Elijah's coming Bonhauer. back to repaint yes. it? Mm -hmm. Yes, That's she is. That's very cool. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. That's my only question. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, I have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion, the, uh, motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving to item 9.5, uh, resolution number 23-24-42, recognizing May as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This report will be presented by our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Ms. Aguirre. Welcome back. Good evening, and thank you. Um, this evening, I'm presenting resolution number 23 20 442, uh, recognizing May as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. The rich heritage of Asian American and Pacific Islanders span the world in the depths of America's history. Generation after generation, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have forged a proud legacy that runs deep through our nation. Through times of hardship and in the face of enduring prejudice, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have persisted and moved ahead to help strengthen our country. The theme for 2024 is advancing leaders through innovation as a tribute to the visionaries and trailblazers who have shaped history and continue to influence the collective future. With this, I'm honored to present Resolution 23-24-42 to acknowledge May as Asian American Pacific Island Heritage Month. Uh, we will continue our community partnership and work with the Tobera Project, whose mission is to educate and raise awareness of the plight, struggles, vitality, and contributions of the Manong generation who first settled in Pajaro Valley in the early 1920s by highlighting and depicting their experiences by firsthand family accounts through photos, artifacts, and oral histories to be displayed for the broader community. Parts of the resolution, whereas the month of May was chosen as National Asian Pacific Heritage Month to commemorate the immigration of the first Japanese to the United States on May 7th, 1843, and to mark the anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10th, 1869. And whereas celebrating Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month provides our community with an opportunity to recognize the achievements, contributions, and history of Asian and Pacific Islander Americans for our community to continue uh, for our con community to develop empathy towards all. Now therefore it be resolved that the Pajaro Valley Unified School District proclaim May 2024 as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month to inspire equity and celebrate diversity within our community to elevate the voices and honor the stories of, 
our local Asian American and Pacific Islander history. And with that, I, yeah, I'm asking for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gary. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do, President Acosta. I'll call this first group of six up. Tony Tapiz, Lourdes Barraza, Gabriel Barraza, Brandon Dinitz, Chris Webb, and Bobby Peltz. Good evening, Tony Tapiz, a founding member of the Tavera Project. 95 years ago today, my grandfather set soil, sets his feet on the soil, and he came to Watsonville, and he worked in the fields. And um, uh, while I'm glad for the uh, accolades and the recognition, I feel we take it with a grain of salt because I don't feel that this is genuine. Um, you know, uh, you guys, you guys are going to say what you want to say, but we know what what's going on, and that is you you really have closed your eyes and your ears to us, the community, and. You know, the one thing in ethnic studies my kids are going to learn this year is that McCarthyism is alive in the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. Okay, um, I'll go next. So I think, you know, things like this, this are awesome, but they're also really self-serving because we need education on the injustices that this group has faced, not, you know, nationally or overseas, but here in our very own town, such as the violence perpetrated against Filipinos in 1929 and the 30s. So when we have resolutions like this, we need education and board members that are responsive to our community. Where have we heard that term? before. So I find it really disingenuous how this resolution mentions the Tabera Project, but this board is also deliberately ignoring the founder of the Tabera Project who's asking you to reconsider the CRE contract. Um, I find the claims that the work of CRE is being anti-Semitic as pure hyperbole and just such an oxymoron. Um, People claim that the curriculum is anti-Semitic because it does not mention the Holocaust or anti-Semitism experienced by Jewish Americans enough. Where in our textbooks do we learn about the injustices perpetrated against this community other than maybe a paragraph about Japanese internment? So let's stop with the self-serving resolutions and pair it with some actions Thank that you, res is responsive to the community. Thank you. I would like to echo the sentiments of the speaker before me. Um, while it is always important to recognize the contributions of every group of Americans that comes here to make this country better, the problem is that when we don't have robust and academically stringent ethnic studies curriculum, we are studying ethnicity, not ethnic studies. We don't st study the struggle of people who come here and are rarely accepted as American. We don't study th the true nature of this society, the power dynamics, the people who are in charge who want to stay in charge and use anything in their power to do so. When we honor the contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, but we don't tell their story and their struggle, then we fail the community. Again, it's interesting, the lack of respect. Mr. Soto, the, on the little thing, it says title. I'm a doctor, please use my title. I put it there for a reason. I worked hard for that title and I would expect that you would respect it again. All I've seen tonight is so much disrespect, the inequity. Other speakers, their, their time never got cut off and yet you cut off at the minute that we start speaking. So disrespectful. Here's, here's a, a, a proposal that says, you know, that um, we want to honor people who've made con contributions, yet this board has maligned Dr. Allison Tintango Cubales, who has made great, great uh, contributions to the studies, uh, to, to the ethnic studies. She's renowned. Anytime you look it up, that's, where you, that's what you see. And I find it so 
disheartening that this is being proposed and yet she's being my line by this board. Not all of you, just, some, just more than half of you. And I, I, I hope that you guys take into consideration just the hypocrisy. Uh, as you know, I, I like resolutions that have substance, so I feel the way to add substance would just be to amend this and to include a renewal of the CRE contract and an apology to Allison. It's like pretty crazy to see this and know that what, what she was basically slandered. So, and I also, I, I don't put this, I mean, this is really like an unforced error um, produced by the board. I, I feel like our district leaders have done the right thing with ethnic studies. They're trying to do the right thing even now and that they're, they're kind of being hurt by, by the board. We can be better and, and like this is, it's been disappointing. Um, also, I think uh, Board President Acosta, I would request that you dismiss the lone CRE critic, um, near loan, and um, channel the, the spirit of a superior steward of this district, Trustee Acosta. Trustee Acosta is one who would make sure to ensure proper time to deliberate and hear from the community, less finding herself at odds with the community by making rash decisions on bad information. Thank you. Uh, while I'm in full support of a resolution marking May, the AAPI Heritage Month. I don't think it would be appropriate, appropriate for this particular board to approve this resolution at this time. The resolution seeks to counter the bullying and the hate that AAPI individuals face every day, but I argue that you bullied Alison Tintiango Cubales, a Filipino American, when you insinuated without evidence that she is anti-Semitic. It is not right for you to pass this resolution until you correct this mistake and apologize. You've handled it so poorly that you managed to alienate uh, other prominent AAPI voices in our community. Watsonville in the Heart has already uh, stopped working with PVUSD, and the Tobera Project has been quite vocal in their anger over the treatment of Dr. Tintiango Kubales and the termination of the CRE contract. How do you plan to partner with local agencies when they don't want to work with you? What I propose is that you begin the work of restoring justice by issuing an official apology to a Dr. Allison Tintiango Kubales. Thank you. All right, last six speakers. Malia Reynolds, Christine Hong, Abby Iridistin, Nat Lowe, Eli Davies, and Takashi Misuno. Good evening. I'm Malaya Simon Reynolds. I'm a PhD candidate in history at UC Santa Cruz. I'm representing Watson Villas in the Heart. We work very closely with the Tapera Project to preserve Filipino American history in the Pajaro Valley and to create widely accessible educational resources and programming. I've come to reiterate our concerns about the board's inadequate deliberation of the contract with Community Responsive Education and to communicate our dismay with the board's disingenuous AAPI Heritage Month re resolution. For over six months, the board has refused to provide concrete evidence and partake in a thorough review of the CRE contract. Because we value research integrity, WITH has suspended its work with the district. The AAPI Month resolution states that PVUSD is committed to working with local organizations like the Tobera Project. We are disturbed that the board would claim to engage in partnerships with community groups whose demand for an equitable ethnic studies curriculum have been and ignored. As Roy Rescio, the founder of the Tabera Project, said, Thank you. it is, quote, ridiculous that the board would slap us down with one hand and laud us with the other. We at Watson Villas in the Heart stand firm in our support and the Tabera Project and we echo USC teachers and students in their calls to bring back about two local Asian American women, Vicki Wong and Lillian Fabros. Um, as children, they were uh, onion pickers in Salinas. They came from Chinese and Filipino farm working families. And um, when they, one, one of them was 12 years old, she started a local baby student nonviolent coordinating committee chapter. And um, when they were in junior high school and high school, they formed um, 
a, a coalition to support anti-war and draft resistors. They actually founded the Salinas chapter of the United Farm Workers. You should also know that as students at UC Berkeley, where APA, the Asian American Political Alliance, was the lead organization in the Third World Liberation Front strike, that they were the leaders in that movement. They looked at the education they had received locally, and they actually tried to, to do a revolution in education through ethnic studies to get the education that they Thank deserve. You, Why do I mention this? I want to say something. You talked about that mural. They came from local farm. I'm here again to stand in solidarity with all of those fighting for the CRE contract. I think it's shameful that you all have slandered Ate Allison, who is renowned in the Filipino community, not just as an educator, but an honest activist, someone who has stood behind the Filipino students for decades now. Um, to say you want to celebrate AAPI Heritage Month is great. That's cool. And there are students in your schools that would benefit from feeling seen. But what would be more tangible, what would actually empower students, is to give them relevant education that helps them feel empowered to do something to change their community. Those kids com uh, that were proposing the mural, that was only possible through ed ethnic studies. They only feel empowered to do that when they feel the support from their education to take a stand. And for you to be remiss about that, and then at the same, t on the other side, slander at the Allison is un unbelievable. So I'm here again to say, put the CRE contract back into the, co re renew the contract, address the issues, and don't just put our name out there for your own benefit. Good evening, I'm Takashi, and I have researched the history of the people in Pajara Valley since 1820. And I came across a very interesting article in Pajara Valley Times in 1866. The title of the article is Arrival, Arrival of Chinamen. I, uh, I quote, this week, some 20 Chinamen arrived in Pajaro, Watsonville, for the harvest fields. Laborers are so scarce in this valley that it was found necessary to send to San Francisco for these pests. Even Diga Indians refused to work for less than $2 per day. I have a question to ask you, based on what you have done since last summer against Asian Americans. This item is very insensitive to Asian Americans. My name is Nat Lowe. I'm here again. Um, I'm the co-director of the Asian American Justice and Innovation Lab. I appreciate the recognition, but it doesn't make sense when you know, you're not actually listening to the actual Asian American community. We sent you a letter a month ago um, asking you to renew the CRE contract. It now has over 100 signatures. I brought you more copies. It's really disingenuous of you to say that you want to honor our community's history when you are continuing to ignore us in the present, to say that you want to recognize our people overcoming systemic barriers while you are actively being the systemic barriers for our youth today. To say that you want to, to, to partner with the Tobera Project with the community and ignoring the fact that the, the Tobera Project has been asking you for months to renew the CRE contract. So you say all these things in your resolution, but we don't actually believe you because we see what you do. Persistence is part of the AAPI heritage. The Delano Great Strikes lasted five years with the joining of Filipino and Mexican farm workers, and that's longer than any of your terms on the board. So our community is united, and like those that came before us, we will fight, we will persist, and we're not going away, and we're not giving up. Right. 
I have a message from the Tabera Project. It is, the Tabera Project finds it deplorable that President Acosta and Vice President Soto have negated the public's will by stonewalling the democratic process. They have taken a page out of the Trump playbook by not returning calls or emails in the last six months. Indeed, they have deflected, delayed, and denied any attempt for a chance to put the CRE contract on the agenda for public discussion and dialogue. Nor have you provided any proof of your baseless allegations against Dr. Alison Tintiango Kubales of anti-Semitism. It's obvious that you do not respect the community you serve, and we find this absolutely disingenuous and pathetic. Why are you even on the board? Also, just personally for me, this is the API uh, resolution. Here's, here's the folks who are API saying, you messed up. Yeah. That's all. Okay. I will bring it back to the board for discussion, comments, deliberation, questions. Trustee Dr. Home. Thank you for, you know, crafting this resolution for our consideration. I know it is uh, often difficult to bring things before the board, and I appreciate the work that went into this um, and what it represents for the views of the district. Um, so with that, I would like to make a motion to approve the resolution. I'll second. I have a first and I have a second. Any other deliberation from the board? Not in our Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion carries 7-0. Moving on to item 9.4, resolution number 23-24-34, I'm sorry, 9-6. Resolution number 2324-34, Child Abuse Prevention Month. This report will be delivered by our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, Ms. Aguirre. That's not what I have on here, but it, would you like to move to, is Ivan? Thank you. Good night. Good evening again, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. Uh, this evening, um, along with our Director of Student Services, Dr. Alcaraz, we will be presenting the resolution uh, for Child Abuse Prevention Month. Give me one, just one second, pulling it up on my end. <laughs> Is it up there? Yeah. So April is a National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, it's where the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is um, committed to making a, a, a stance against child abuse, um, whereas that we are um, the California Child Welfare Indicators Project, a collaborative venture between the University of California, Berkeley, and the California Department of Social Social Services um, found that 416,901 reports of child abuse in 2021. And whereas um, safe, stable, and nurturing relationships and communities can break the cycle of abuse and um, mal mal maltreatment. Do you want to take over? Yeah. Whereas child abuse prevention requires a coordinated and comprehensive response by all systems supporting children, youth, and families, whereas everyone has a stake in ensuring that children have access to the resources and supports they need to be safe, healthy, and successful, and whereas sus suspected child abuse or neglect must immediately be reported to the appropriate law enforcement authorities, and whereas the suspected child abuse or neglect must immediately be reported appropriately to all parties. Now therefore be resolved that the Pajaro Valley Unified School District Board of Trustees um, adopts this resolution. 
Thank you both. And we have no public speakers on this item, so I'm going to bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation, comments. And I'm sorry, I didn't have in my notes that you were supposed to present. <laughs> sorry. Um, so this is a. Can, it's okay to talk. Yeah. Um, it's a resolution that comes before us every year. I'm a clinical social worker that worked at CPS for many years, and so I'd like to make a motion to support this resolution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee DeSerpa. I have a first, and um, Trustee Scow. Oh, second. Second, and did you have a comment? Uh, thank you for your work, and thank you for your comments, Trustee DeSerpa, and I'm looking forward to passing this resolution. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? As any abstaining? Seeing none, it carries 7-0. Thank you. Moving on to item 9.7, um, resolution acknowledging National School Nurse Day and School Nurse Week. This report will be presented by our SELPA Director and of Special Education, uh, Ms. Gorman. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Good evening. I'm glad it's still evening and not morning yet. Um, President Acosta, Vice President Soto, and Board of Trustees, and Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. I've been lucky enough for the last few years to present this resolution celebrating school nurses. My mom was a nurse, and now my son is becoming a registered nurse. So I'm happy to shine a light on all the fantastic work our school nurses do every day, every year. This year's theme is Nurses Make the Difference. The American Nurse Association is honoring incredible nurses who embody the spirit of compassion and care in every, in every health care setting. I want to share a very short poem from Nurse Labs, the author's unknown, but it spoke to me about the difference a nurse can make in a student's life. Let me dedicate my life today to care for those who come my way. Let me touch each one with a healing hand and the gentle art for which I stand. And then tonight when the day is done, let me rest in peace if I've helped just one. So many people get into this line of work not for recognition, but to make a difference in a child's life. National Nurses Week is May 6th through 12th, and it's part of a larger, larger National Nurses Month. So I'm requesting that PBUSD Board of Education celebrates and acknowledges the accomplishments of school nurses everywhere and their effort for meeting the needs of today's student by improving the delivery of health care in our schools and offer gratitude to school nurses who contribute to our community by helping students stay healthy in school and ready to learn. With that, I'm asking for board approval of this resolution. Thank you, Ms. Gorman. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have one, Brandon Dennett. Um, all right, good evening to the board. Thank you for allowing me to speak again. Third time up here today. Um, I just want to shout out all the amazing nurses that we have in this district. I know many of them personally, and I know how hard they work each and every day. Um, they do a lot of special education assessments, especially the initials as our kids are coming in and getting identified for special education. Their workload is pretty outrageous and at sometimes. So I again ask the board to find something to pair with this resolution because this resolution, it's, it's only words. So what can we do to improve the working conditions of our nurses? Last um, negotiation cycle, the PVFT tried to propose language to protect the workload of our nurses, to limit the amount of sites that they're going to, to look at equity amongst the nurses' caseloads. So you don't have one nurse serving six different populations while another nurse is maybe only serving two and you have the comprehensive high schools and there's so much that goes into it that I just hope that when we enter into reopeners we can look at language to help retain our, our nurses, recruit more nurses because the work they do is super important and I respect each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation, comments, questions. Trustee Dr. Holm. Well you knew I was going to say something. 
And you knew I was going to call on you first, too. <laughs> so I'm going to make a motion to approve. But, Thank you know, it's, um, you know, in my, my work role, you know, we have, you know, our students, nursing students, you know, working alongside our PVUSD school nurses. And the experience that they have is pretty incredible. And so watching these soon-to-be nurses thinking about nursing in a community-minded way is so important. And I think about my own experiences as a student when I was young and going to the, the nurse's office when I needed you know, help with something. And then so many people I know whose lives were profoundly altered in, in amazing ways because a nurse noticed things that were going on. And so the work that our school nurses do is so important, and I appreciate the, you know, support from you know our our, our PVFT folks, you know, for supporting, you know, the nurses as you know other member as bargaining members and advocating. Um, it's late enough that the words are starting to get less and less articulate. So just know that in my deep appreciation and. and all of that. So move to approve. Thank you. I have a motion. Any other discussion, deliberation, or comments from the board? Trustee DeSerpa? We love our nurses. We thank them. We know that they could make a lot more money working in a hospital or at home health or hospice. And we're really, really grateful that they choose to work here in this district and make a difference in the lives of children and families who are special needs. Um, so I'd like to, to second the motion. Wonderful. Thank you, um, Trustee DeSerpa. Trustee Bellanosco. Uh, thank you uh, for bringing this forward. I, I do also want to acknowledge several nurses in our district have also come, brought in things to my attention, problems at the school that were beyond their scope of work, but they had to deal with it because, as nurses say, and all the problems of society or the school come, come to them. So one of them is Elizabeth Thorne at Freedom Elementary, who's been a very strong advocate for that school. I got to visit uh, with her and with Superintendent Sheckman came by. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to her, um, also PVFT, uh, a leader. And um, and I think we're, we're, are we down a few nurses staffing wise? Are we fully staffed? Or? We're, we're luckily fully staffed uh. this year and we had four new nurses, um, yeah, that came in. and. They've been excellent, a wonderful addition. Okay. okay, well that's good news to hear. Um, and thanks to the board for passing that great raise last year. I'm sure that helped too. And uh, I guess that's the third. So uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I have a first and second. Unless there's any other deliberation or comments, so I'll call for a vote. To all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving to item 9.8, resolution number 23-24-41, After School Professionals Appreciation Week, April 22nd through April 26th. This report will be presented by our Director of Expanded Learning, Ms. Littleton Bruno. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for staying. Um, good evening again, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Interim Superintendent Sheckman. This resolution I'm bringing to you tonight is to acknowledge after-school professionals. Again, we have over 600 after-school professionals in PVUSD working with over 6,000 students. Many of these staff go beyond the after-school world. They are part of the Watsonville community. Last year during the flooding, we had two staff members from our after-school team staff at the fairgrounds at 5.30 in the morning for over two and a half months, waking up our PVUSD students, helping them get ready for school, and walking them to the right area to meet the correct bus. After-school program is a huge vein in heart because in our PBOSD school because of our staff, their dedication to our students. Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we, a team of us, are going over to Gilroy where we're going to acknowledge those two staff members, Anna Hernandez and Karina Flores, who are receiving Region 5's Expanded Learning Excellent Awards in the morning. 
I'm so excited for them. And also our expanded learning opportunity specialist, Ms. Lupe from Freedom Elementary School will also be re receiving award. I'm gonna read just a couple areas from this resolution. Whereas <clears throat> April 22nd through April 26, after school programs across the nation will observe after school professionals appreciation week. Whereas after school professionals of Parho Valley Unified School District are fully committed to providing meaningful academic and enrichment opportunities for our students, such as art, music, STEAM, fitness, nutrition, and more. On Friday, we'll be doing a reboot showcase where we'll be bringing coffee bars to all of our after school programs. We're celebrating all of our staff and showcasing our programs. I'd like to invite you all, if you are free on Friday, all of our sites will be doing things. Please email me and I kindly ask you to approve this resolution to shine light on the work that our staff is doing. Thank you, Ms. Brun. Any public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion, deliberation, comments. This questions. is awesome. I'd like to make a motion to approve this resolution. Thank you for all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trust. <coughs> the Serpa, excuse me. <clears throat> Anyone else? I second it. Uh, just, and did you have any comments? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have a first and second. Unless there's any other deliberation, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Moving to item 9.9, .9, adopt resolution number 23 24 38, acknowledging May 19th through the 25th, 2024, as Classified School Employee Week. This report will be presented by our Director of Classified Human Resources, Ms. Shanks. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, President Acosta, Superintendent Sheckman, and board members. Um, as uh, President Acosta said, I am Pam Shanks. I'm the Director of Classified Personnel, and I'd like to introduce Diana Martinez. Um, she is a proud classified employee who's been with the district for 41 years. And this is very common among our classified employees to have long um, longevity with our district. Um, so I do have the honor and privilege of presenting this uh, resolution tonight to the board um, in order to recognize and celebrate Classified School Employee Week, which will be May 19th to the 25th. Classified school employees are being formally recognized for their valuable work. Uh, the, the contribution of our classified employees is critical to supporting the positive instructional environment. There are many important classified employees who work directly with students. Um, school bus drivers are the first person our students see on their way to school. Instructional staff work directly with students in the classroom making a daily impact. Office staff at the school sites work with students, parents, and staff regularly. Healthcare assistants handle many health concerns of our students. Custodial maintenance and operations help keep our sites and departments clean and safe. The many support and guidance staff help keep students safe, provide career information, and help with translation. Food and nutrition services workers serve our students <clears throat> breakfast and lunch every day. There are many, also many classified staff who work behind the scenes um, to help support the sites, many of which are located at the district office. Human resources recruit and hire uh, the most qualified staff and process new hires so our payroll staff can process their paycheck. Our benefits department makes sure that our employees have the valuable health benefits that the district offers. Accounting fiscal staff keeps track of the finances that come into the district and make sure that we are being fiscally solvent. The purchasing staff make sure we get the best price on supplies used throughout the district and make sure that they are delivered. And the technology department assists the entire district with our technology needs. As you can see, we have a large variety of classified staff who perform important work that helps supports students, staff, and our community. I want to personally thank them for all their hard work. And I ask the board tonight to, to approve this resolution 232438. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. All right. I'm going to bring it back to the board. And I'm going to um, actually be the first to speak on this, um, having been um, a board member sitting up here who was a longtime classified employee for the school district, right? Once CSEA, always CSEA. Yeah, Diana's shaking her head. Yeah. 
And um, also for me, it's just an extra special moment tonight. Um, with mine and my family's loss this year, um, most recently in the past few months of my mother. My mother worked for over 40 years, her career as a classified school employee, as a school bus driver and a school bus driver instructor. And so I'll add there, yes, they are the first to see our children's faces in the morning and our children, typically it's their face that they last see from a school district personnel. And so it's with my great honor and pleasure that I'm gonna um, make the motion to approve this resolution tonight. Trustee, I'm sorry, uh, Vice President Soto. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll second that motion because I was classified management at one point too, so I was right there in the trenches with y'all back in the day and uh, wasn't quite CSEA because mm -hmm. they were always giving me a hard time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we worked together, we made things happen and, and uh, made a lot of progress. And I mean, Hurley over there is, you know, he, He's grown up now. He's he's Mr. Director, so you know there's there's progress being made right right before our eyes. So um, yeah, thanks thanks for recognizing everybody, and thank everybody out there for your hard work. I know you Absolutely. you don't get the recognition that you deserve, despite the fact that you're the the oil and the uh, gears behind this whole district to keep it going. So thanks again. So apparently, uh, Hurley was Diana's student back in the day. So that's a very typical thing also for our classified staff that are very much a part of this community and really help support the district, so. Well. Oops, thank you. Um, Trustee DeSerpa. I'll just keep it short. Uh, classified are the backbone of this district. Um, we recognize it and we appreciate you guys so much. So thank you for bringing this forward. I think about all the wonderful people who have come up to us at the podium over the years, Bobby, Esther, Robin. I mean, there's scores of other people, but I just so appreciated. And partly it's your um, positive and sunshiny outlook when you come up to the podium. You're very respectful and um, this board appreciates the work that you do and your Wonderful personalities so much. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Trustee DeServa. Trustee Bonnelskow. Thank you, Boa. Thank you, Diana, for all your, your work for our district. You're a rock for our district. And uh, I want to uh, uh, support all, all the comments from my, uh, the, the trustees. Uh, and I want to say we need to find a way to pay our classified workers more. Otherwise, we're going to lose them. And if we always just give them the same percentage, it's not fair to our lowest paid workers. So once in a while, we need to do an adjustment. So our, otherwise, we're just going to widen inequality. So I hope next year we can find a way to, uh, to do better for our classified workers. Thank you, Trustee Blanosco. Trustee Flores? 40 years, that's amazing, or 41 years, congratulations. And thank you for your dedication to this district. And I just want to thank all CSEA workers for all the hard work that they do for our kids from the beginning of the day all the way till the end. They're the first and the last on campus sometimes. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Dodge, Jr. I'd also just like to say thank you, Diana. You know, uh, I'm 42. And uh, I, I, I think I remember, you know, meeting you when I, I'm meeting White E. Hall, you know, you, Sonida, Esther, uh, Bobby, he was, you know, important of me being here with CAC, putting me here, I believe. Um, just all the others that are still working that are retiring after 40 years, you know, I don't want to say their names because they're still, still working, but they're looking forward to retiring. But, you know, the, custo the, the custodians, the maintenance, um, the people who woke up every day, didn't complain, went to work, you know, <coughs> emergencies, sickness, and uh, never complained. Still, you know, maybe a little bit, but I mean, they, they hung in there and they're putting in their 40 years. And, you know, um, I just like to say thank you, women, guys. You know, you know who you are. And so I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, I recognize and, and thank you guys. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee Dr. Holm. A few more than 42 years, but one of, you know, still that does put things into perspective, right? You know, just the, the length of service is incredible. I mean, it's a, it's a marker of dedication and you really have to be dedicated to 
ride the waves that come through a school district because time, you know, things ebb and flow, right? And you know, you've got to be dedicated to our students and our community, and our classified workers are. That's one thing that just when I first <coughs> ran as a candidate, you know, five and a half some odd years ago, um, you know, I had known our classified workers, but really starting to have those more in-depth conversations and really getting in touch with just what what an incredible gift your work is to this district and community. Um, and I'm speaking to you because you're here as the representative, but I'm speaking to classified <coughs> workers. I'll leave it with thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Hunt, Vice President Soto. Yeah, I just want to recap on everybody's comments and I want to take a moment and take this resolution and honor my sister. My sister was classified for 32 years as well. You, and Diana, you probably know her, Lucy Morales. Oh, she was oh. at Minnie White for years and years. Yeah, wow. that's my sister. So she, she's been retired for a little while now. She's a little bit older than me, but she's prettier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if she never talked about this kind of stuff if they ever did this during her tenure here. So I want to take a moment and, and honor her with this as well. I appreciate that. Thank you, Vice President Soto. And thank you, Diana, and for you and all of our classified workers. I don't think any of us could say enough about our classified workers. So, um, but we have a first and a second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Any abstaining? No. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you, Diana, for all your years of service and your work with us. Um, moving on to item, yes, item 910, um, adopt resolution number 23-24-39, acknowledging May 7th, 2024 as a National Teacher Appreciation, I'm going to get it out, National Teacher Appreciation Day. This report will be presented by our Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxton. Good evening, President Acosta, uh, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman, who's not there, and board members. Um, I'm the Interim Assistant Superintendent for HR, Brian Saxton, and you'll have me for the next five items. So uh, this first one, we are pleased to present uh, a resolution for the National Day of the Teacher on May 7th, so coming up in just a couple weeks. Um, it, it's, I was trying to think of something witty to say or something about teachers, but it's, everyone knows how valuable they are to our students, right? When our students walk in the classroom um, and teachers are just asked nowadays to do so much. Um, Growing up, you know, your teacher, they, they taught you to read and to write and, and all of those various things. But now teachers are, they have so many facets that they must do, right? They're, they're counselors, they're, um, they're, they're at the actual teacher, right? They're dealing with crises that they've never experienced. They're working with families. They're, they do it all. And so uh, a few words that I've picked out of this resolution um, that just really kind of uh, spoke to me, right? So uh, the contributions of our teachers, uh, they're crucial. It's not just that they're needed, but they're crucial to the lives of our students. Um, whereas economic, political, and cultural well-being, not just of the student, but of the nation, uh, is enriched, right? So that's super important. Just those first two lines just talk about how vital teachers are to just the everyday well-being of our students. So uh, with that said, um, we are asking for you to adopt this resolution um, so that we can recognize our teachers on May 7th. They should be recognized every day of the year, but it's nice that they have a special day on May 7th. Um, and hopefully we all do what we can to recognize them each and every day. But we would hope for your approval on this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Do we have any um, public speakers to this item? Yes, we have one, Brandon Dinnett. Okay. 
I'm back again. Please don't get us yogurt parfaits on this day. We don't want them. Um, I'm here again just to point out, you know, there's a little bit of hypocrisy here. Not from Brian. I really appreciate Brian. Um, but if you all really did appreciate your teachers, you would drop the arbitration case for our use of personal necessity day. How can you sit up here and say that you appreciate your teachers at the same time that you have perpetrated an unfair labor practice against us by unilaterally changing an interpretation of contract language that is supported by decades of past practice. That is an unfair labor practice. Even if you win in arbitration, you lose. You come out looking horrible, you face an exodus of teachers, and you've sown the seeds of discontent and disrespect. So I asked the board to find the courage to actually do something and show us the respect that you claim to have for us. I will drop one nugget from Judge Judy because I grew up watching Judge Judy and I swear she teaches you so much. One quote from Judge Judy, do not pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Brandon. Um, so with that, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you for that presentation and the comment. I'll just make a motion and support, and I think it's no secret I'm a big supporter of our teachers, and, and I think uh, our board has been uh, moving in the right direction and is going to continue to move in the right direction with our new superintendent. And I, and I want to think that the climate has, has improved this past year as well. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Scow. Trustee Dr. Holm? Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll second. And um, I've been thinking about my mom. You know, she's, she's still with me, but she was a, a teacher for, for many years. And I think about <clears throat> just some of the things that she wrestled with as a teacher you know, that our, our teachers in our district wrestle with, you know, every day. I, my mom, I, had, I was bullied pretty severely when in third and fourth grade. My mom taught at that school. And after I left that school, my mom still taught there. And she ended up uh, having the kid who bullied me in her classroom. Treated that kid fairly. You know, knew a lot of the background. She wasn't able to tell me at the time because privacy. But I think about the kind of person who can be a teacher and can give a child who is in pain and in need the kind of attention and care that they need, even when that child hadn't been kind to their own child. And that takes a special kind of person. And I know our teachers are doing that all the time. And thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee DeSerpa. My grandma was a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse, and um, I have a, a big love for our teachers. And um, I know sometimes we're at odds during negotiations, but I hope you know that um, I and others up here want only the best for the kids in this district and only the best for all of our teachers. So we, we applaud you on May 7th and, and all the rest of the year as well. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? Trustee Flores? I just wanted to show my appreciation to our teachers. We have a great crop of teachers at PVUSD. Um, I've shared this with um, Mr. Sheckman. You know, my 11th grader at Aptos has shared with me several times this year that he loves all of his teachers, that he's just, he has a connection with every single one of them, which is amazing, you know, and, and I just love to see him just thriving this year with with just knowing that every single one of his teachers is there for him and there to help him. Um, and he, he struggles, you know, he's not a straight A student, but he definitely gives it his all. And um, I just, I love to see that. And so I have such a huge appreciation for what our teachers do every single day with um, our children that we, you know, entrust them to. So thank you to all of our teachers at PBUSD. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Vice President Soto. 
Yeah, I want to take a moment and thank all the teachers as well. I mean, I know that we just acknowledged the classified as being part of that machine called PVUSD, but the teachers are part of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, all, you all do hard work and you uh, take care of the kids at every grade level and I mean, you have a level of patience that you know, I have a great appreciation for. I have four kids and you know, I, I know my patience with them was uh, very well uh, tested from time to time, but uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to deal with kids and uh, you guys do great work. So thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Trustee Dodge, Jr. Yeah, I just want to quite say thank you, teachers, but also thank you to the teachers who who are my teachers, again, you know, for the area, for the schools that I represent. Um, one of the reasons why I'm here is because um, I they believed in me, I believed in them, and I, I feel, I just want to say thank you to them for letting me be in this seat, you know, to learn from these teachers from kindergarten all the way through Watson High, uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here, and I just like to thank them. And I also like to thank my classmates that are teachers. Um, the, you know, I didn't know they were going to be teachers. They didn't really know either. But uh, uh, you know, I, I feel proud when I see them, you know, working at Watson High or Landmark, and it's, it's it's a good feeling. So I just want to say thank you, guys. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. And I'm just going to um, echo saying um, I want to commend all of our teachers and thank them for all their hard work. Um, as an educator myself, um, I understand the strains and the pressures um, working in education. And there's seven of us that are sitting up here um, on this board, and I don't think any seven of us would be where we are in our personal or professional lives or sitting up here if it weren't for the teachers in our lives. So thanks to all of our teachers and for all their hard work. So I have a first and a second. With that, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? With that, that carries 7-0. Thank you. And moving on. Thank you. To Thank you. And moving on to the next item, 9.11, which will also be presented by Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. This is the approval of the MOU between PBUSD and PBFT for the Migrant Seasonal Head Start and Buena Vista Children's Center. Good evening again, President Acosta, Interim Assistant, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Sheckman, and Board of Trustees. I am uh, Brian Saxton, and so I'm here to present um, the MOU of Understanding, a Memorandum of Understanding between PVFT and PVUSD uh, for Migrant Seasonal and Buena Vista. These are our two seasonal programs. Um, they are combining support services uh, in order to better serve the students that um, attend these programs. And this is on the recommendation of Stanislaw County. So some of these support services um, are family child care home specialists, um, teacher development, professional development, um, and things such as that. Um, the MOU outlines just seniority, compensation, and then how long things will be going on. Um, again, this is based on recommendations via Stanislaw County. So we uh, kindly request your approval of this M MOU. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Do we have any public speakers on this? We do not. All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Any? One? Don't everybody jump. Uh, this is a standard MOU that comes before this board, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. I have a first and a second. Any other deliberation or comments? Seeing none. All right, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. That will carry 601. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to the next item. Um, 9.12 Memorandum of Understanding between PVUSD and PVFT for subbing during prep on a 1-6 period schedule at middle schools. And this report will be presented by Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxton. Good evening again, President Acosta, 
Interim Superintendent Sheckman and Board of Trustees, I'm Brian Saxton. I'm here to present the MOU for subbing on prep one through six at a middle school. This is just a continuation of an MOU that we held last year. This ensures that uh, teachers who sub on their prep shall be compensated for one hour um, at that step in class. Uh, this is just a continuation. Uh, Roddy from PVFT alluded to this. If you, if you have to sub on your prep for 50 minutes, um, we're going to pay you for an hour rather than pay you for 50 minutes based on you getting there and, and going back and having to give up your prep. So we respectfully request your approval of this MOU. Okay. Um, do we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we do. We have one, Brandon Dinitz. Okay, so I genuinely do want to thank Brian for working with us on this MOU. This is not an issue that can be just looked at from a straight numbers perspective and, oh, well, you only subbed for 53 minutes, so we're only going to pay you for 53 minutes. No, it, it does not work like that. There is a human element to this, so to pay someone 0.95 of an hour or 0.89 of an hour, it's just really disrespectful and doesn't take into account what goes into giving up your prep to sub. For some teachers that prep time might be the only time in the day you have to use restroom so you're like oh great I'll just hold it for another two hours or whatever and you're racing to go to the office to get the key you're racing you're working with new students you're going through the role the kids are like oh hell yeah we have a sub Woo! and then they're like oh no wait you work here I can't take advantage of this situation then you got to rush back to the drop the key off back to your class so you do give up more than 53 minutes if that's the period it is an hour's worth of work and it's very disruptive to your day and it's just a shame that we have some administrators who they saw the MOU expire so they're like okay we're going to take advantage of this so please don't look at this from a numbers perspective and um, like you just passed it you appreciate us show us you appreciate us thank you thank you and now I'll bring it back to the board for discussion deliberation comments I d definitely can add a comment that I could feel that personal pain of what you're talking about because we have a 10 minute passing period between classes and students just really feel that they can monopolize your time, right? And we wanna be there for our students and help support them, but they also don't realize our prep from moving from one class to another as well. And somebody's gotta get into the bathroom at some point, you know? So I feel that pain. <laughs> Right, and I know Trustee Dr. Holm knows what I'm talking about. So um, I'm in full support of this, so I'll make a motion but I, um, to support it, but I want to bring it back to the board, of course. Trustee Bilano scout Yeah, I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you for your work on it. Thank you for uh, bringing it to our attention. Glad we can make it better. Okay, so I have a first and a second. Any other deliberation from the board? No? All right, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Nope, that carries 7-0, thank you. Moving on to item 9.13, um, approve MOU between the Santa Cruz Silicon Valley New Teacher Project and PBUSD. And again, this report will be presented by Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. Good evening again, President Acosta. Interim Superintendent Sheckman and Board of Trustees. It is me, Brian Saxton. I'm here to present this MOU between PVUSD and the New Teacher Project. I'm very excited about this. Uh, this is a great organization. If you didn't know, these people support all our new teachers who are trying to clear their credential. Uh, it's not enough that once you come out of college with a credential, you then have to work two years with one of these mentors to clear it so that it can um, be fully realized. So they do a great job. Uh, they take on caseloads. We work closely with them. And um, normally this, for a teacher to clear their credential, right, if they would have had to do it on their own, it does cost thousands of dollars. So we are helping them out with that and providing them this service. So we respectfully request that you would approve this MOU. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers this item? Yes, we do. We have one, Brandon Dennett. 
Okay, this will be my last time tonight. Um, I just wanted to take a second to shout out the mentors that I had through the New Teacher Project. I had uh, Melanie Kuhn was my mentor in my second year. Uh, my mentor in my first year was Michelle Shear. She was an administrator in this district and someone who is absolutely instrumental to my development, not just as a teacher, but as a person. I absolutely loved Michelle Shear to this day, invited her to my wedding. Um, so these people, they do really help our new teachers. Teachers, and I know we do different things like have the voluntary coaching MOU, but when it's coming from someone whose sole job is to mentor teachers, who has the time to meet with you, to listen to you vent, to listen to you brainstorm strategies, it's just so empowering and important. And like Brian said, to clear your credential without this could cost you up to $3,000. So just to have this level of support is something that our teachers need. Um, we hope to see it extended to teachers who are maybe on a preliminary waiver program or something like that to get the support because our teachers need it and we do really value this partnership. So thank you. Thank you. And I will bring it back to the board um, for discussion, deliberation. And I'll just, you know, make a quick comment sort of echoing what Ren just said. I, I, I remember going through that too when I first got into education and looking for my mentors and it was really my task. I tasked myself with that and I was fortunate that I had fostered relationships throughout my life that I had that, but I think this is really important and I, this is standard. We've had this come before the board in the past Correct. and um, I think we need to continue to do this and support our teachers and it's really important to, to have that mentor, sure. and especially as Brandon spoke that that's what that person really just does. So I'll support it. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I have a second from Trustee Scow. Any other comments? In Trustee the, I do, quickly. In the past, they've had a hard time staffing these mentor teachers. We've had new teachers <clears throat> in our district who did not get a mentor until February. A so, dear friend of mine, actually, this happened to. So I'm wondering if you could just comment on whether or not they have full staffing. We do have full staffing. Um, one of our two, one of these mentors is going back to the classroom, so we're going to be hiring for one of those positions. But we've had excellent candidates over the last couple of years. And then if we do, there's a program in place now where if we do, because the the mentors can only take so many teachers on as a caseload, so if they run into those numbers, um, then we contract with, with the new teacher project. They get a contract mentor who isn't necessarily someone from our district, but is still trained with new teacher project who will pick up the people who, who need it. Okay, that sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Trustee Stripper. Did that answer all your questions? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, I have a first and a second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That carries 7-0. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 9.14, the Williams Quarterly Report for January, February, March, the first quarter of 2024. This item will be presented by, again, our Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. They just wanted you to be the wrap-up hitter for the night, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. So good evening again, okay. President Acosta, Interim Superintendent Checkman, and Board of Trustees. I'm Brian Saxton, and this is uh, the Williams Quarterly Report from January, February, and March. Um, we are required to adopt a complaint system as part of this Williams settlement. On a quarterly basis, Williams complaints must be reported to the board and the county superintendent. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that we received zero complaints related to the items on the Williams complaint for the months of January, February, and March. So we kindly request your approval of this, and thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. <clears throat> All right. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion, questions, deliberation. Trustee Dr. Holm? I'll move to approve. I have a first. Do I have a second? Second. I have a first and a second. Any other deliberation from the board before I call for a vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? <clears throat> All right. That will carry 7-0. Thank you, sir, for being here with us tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, moving to the consent agenda, the, the consent items are routine items coming before the board. Uh, do we have any public speakers to the consent agenda? We have none. We have none. So are there any items that any board member wishes to defer? 
None. Okay. Seeing none, then can I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. I have, I have a first and I have a second to approve the consent agenda as is. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That carries 700. And next we will move to item 13.1, action on report and report on closed session. Do we? Are there any items to report from closed session? Yes, we do, President Acosta, from uh, closed session, from regular board meeting April 24th, 2024, closed session item 2.1, expulsion referral. So under closed session agenda item 2.1, the vote, or the board voted 601 with the trustee Scow and absentia, approve the recommendation from district administration for a suspended ex expulsion for the remainder of the academic year for student number 23-24-025. Motion number one. Closed session item 2.2, .2. I move to approve the certificate of personnel report as presented by district administration on April 24th, 2024 with 30 and seven additional action items. I have a second. I have a second. <clears throat> I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Any abstaining? Abstain. That will carry 601, thank you. Uh, motion number two, closed session item 2.3. So I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on April 24, 2024 with 30 and six additional action items. Do we have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Same. That will carry 601. Closed session item 2.7. Under closed session item agenda 2.7, the board voted 601 with Trustee Scow and Absentia, approve, reject a special education settlement for student SSID number 149-362-8221. And last but not least, closed session item 2.8, under closed session Agenda item 2.8, the, vo the board voted 601, once again with Trustee Scow and Absentia, to adopt resolution number 23-24-40, authorizing the release of 18 certificated temporary staff equating to 12.4 FTE. And that is all. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, so for item 14.1, our next board meeting is our regular board meeting on May 8th, 2024. It will be here in the Watsonville City Council Chambers. I will now adjourn this meeting at 11.54 p.m. on April 24th, 2024. We did make it, Trustee DeSerpa. <laughs>